Talmud, Masmod, Kitna, C-H-A-P-T-E-R, I mission and irrigated field may be watered during the festival week or in the sabbatical year both from a newly emerging spring and from a spring that is not just emerged but not with water from stored rain nor from a swipe well nor may small basins be formed about the vines. R.L.A.'s or B.S.R.I. says that a water channel may not be newly made during the festival week nor in the sabbatical year but the sages say that a channel may be newly made in. The sabbatical year and one that has got out of order may be repaired during the festival week and impaired water works in the public domain may be repaired or cleaned out and roads, broadways and ritual pools may be put in order and all public needs may be performed and gravesides may be marked and public commissioners may set out also to inspect the first seed crops tomorrow. Now one might argue that after having permitted watering from a newly emerging spring which is apt to come along, tearing up the soil need further mention be made of drawing from a spring that is not newly emerging which is unlikely to come tearing up the soil. I may answer that it is necessary to mention the latter for if the tana had mentioned only the newly emerging spring I might have said that only here where it is for an irrigation plot it is permitted but not for a bale plot because it is apt to come tearing up the soil but on the other hand from a spring that is not newly. Emerging which is unlikely to come tearing up the soil I might say that even a bale plot may be watered therefore he informs us that there is no difference be it a spring newly emerging or a spring not newly emerging an irrigation plot may be watered therefrom but a bale plot may not be and once know we that the term Beth Hashelahin denotes a thirsty field it is written when thou wast faint and weary and we render the word faint in Aramaic by Meshalhai and once know we that Beth Habail denotes settled soil it is written for as a man be the husband develop a maiden so shall thy sons be as husbands unto thee and we render in Aramaic behold as a young man settles down with a maiden thy sons shall become settled in the midst of thee who may be the unnamed Tana who maintains that work to prevent loss is allowed but to augment profit is not allowed and that even in averting loss we should not do any laborious work said Arhuna it is the view of our Eliza B. Jacob, as we learned, our Eliezer B. Jacob says water may be trained along from tree to tree, provided that one does not water thus the entire field. I grant you may understand our Eliezer B. Jacob to disallow exertion to enhance profit, but could you also understand him from here to disallow exertion even where loss is involved? Rather, said our Papa, whose view is it, it is our Judas, as it is taught a spring newly emerging may be used for watering even a field that is a bale plot. So our Mayor our Judah says none but a field that is a languid plot that has dried up may be watered there from our Eliezer B. As Rai says neither one nor the other, our Judah went even further and said a person may not clean out a water channel and with the dredging water his garden of the brie heat during the festival week. Now, what is meant by a languid plot that dried up? If you say literally dried up, what is the good of watering it? Said Abay, it means that this old spring has run dry and another has just. Emerged instead our Eliezer B. As Rai says neither one nor the other by this he means to say that it makes no difference whether the old spring has run dry or has not run dry a newly emerging spring is not to be used but how do you arrive at this conclusion perhaps when Arjuda said that a languid plot may be watered from a newly emerging spring and a bale plot may not be Talmud, Masmod could and be he was referring only to a newly emerging spring since it may come along tearing up it. Soil but a spring that is not just newly emerging and which is unlikely to come along tearing up the soil he might allow even for a bale plot if you take it thus then whom does our mission represent the fact is that according to our Judah it makes no difference whether it be a newly emerging spring or a spring not just newly emerging in either case a languid plot may be watered therefrom but a bale plot may not be and the reason why it states the newly emerging spring is merely to show. How far our Meir is prepared to go namely that even a newly emerging spring may be used for watering and even for a bale field it was stated if one is seen weeding or watering the seedlings on the Sabbath under what category of the offense should he be cautioned Rabbi said it comes under the category of plowing our Joseph said under the category of sowing said Rabbi my view seems the more reasonable for what is the object of the plower to loosen the soil here too he loosens the soil. Said our Joseph my view seems the more reasonable for what is the object of the sower to promote the growth of the produce here too he promotes the growth of the produce said Abay to Rabbi your view presents difficulty and our Joseph's view presents difficulty your view presents difficulty for does the act come only under the category of plowing and not under that of sowing only our Joseph's view presents difficulty for does it come only under the category of sowing and not under that. A plowing also and should you rejoin that where there are two possible categories the offender is liable only on one count this cannot be for did not Arkahana say that if one incidentally pruned his tree and cutting it for wood he is liable on two counts one under the category of planting and one again under that of reaping this is a difficulty our Joseph thereupon put an objection to rabble from the following one who weeds or covers with earth the first seeds receives judicial. Flogging our Akiva says also one who preserves them now this is in perfect accord with my view as I say that he who weeds is to be cautioned under the category of sowing which explains the penalty because sowing is explicitly forbidden in connection with the first seeds but according to your view who say that he is to be cautioned under the category of plowing is plowing forbidden in connection with the first seeds said he rabble to him he is flogged under the category of Preserving them but surely since the last clause states our Akiva says also one who preserves them may we not infer that according to the first ten of the penalty is not on account of preserving them the entire statement is to be taken as recording our Akiva's view and the latter clause is explanatory on what ground does one who weeds or covers with earth the proceeds receive a flogging because he comes under the category of preserving for our Akiva says also he who preserves them what is our Akiva's reason it is taught thou shalt not sow thy field with two kinds of seed this tells me about sowing whence the prohibition against preserving what is already sown from the instructive word in Kilim the proceeds in thy field not we learned an irrigated field may be watered during the festival week or in the sabbatical year this permission is perfectly correct in regard to the festival week where the prohibition is merely to avoid exertion but where losses Threatened the rabbis have allowed it, but in regard to the sabbatical year, whether on the view that watering comes under the category of sowing or on the view that it comes under that of plowing is either sowing or plowing permitted in the sabbatical year, said Abay Armisha is speaking of the sabbatical year in the present time, and it expresses the view held by rabbi, for it is taught rabbi says it is written, and this is the manner of the release released by every creditor of that which he hath lent to his neighbor. The text speaks here of two forms of release: one, the release of the soil from tillage, and the other, the release of money. The juxtaposition of which tells us that so long as you must release the soil from tillage, you must release the money debt. But when you do not release the soil, you need not release the money, said rabbi. Not necessarily. You may even say it voices the view of the rabbis, and that they are the principal types of work that the divine law has forbidden explicitly. Talmud, Masmod, Kitten, but derivative operations it has not forbidden, for it is written. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard that which groweth of itself of thy harvest. Thou shalt not reap, and the grapes of thy undressed vine thou shalt not gather. Now, since pruning comes within the general process of sowing and grape gathering within the general process of reaping. What law then did the all-merciful desire to inculcate by inserting these secondary processes into the text to indicate that only for these secondary processes specified in the text is one to be held liable, and for any other secondary processes one is not to be held liable? Indeed, not surely it has been taught thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard that only forbids me sowing or pruning whence is forbidden weeding or hoeing or the trimming of wilted parts from it. Instructive form of the text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not which means no manner of work in thy field no manner of work in thy vineyard likewise whence is derived the rule not to cut back shoots or thin twigs or put up props for supporting fruit trees from the same instructive text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not which means no manner of work in thy field no manner of work in thy vineyard similarly whence is derived the rule not to manure or remove stones or dust with flour of sulfur or fumigate the tree from the instructive wording of the text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not that is no manner of work in the field no manner of work in the vineyard shall I say that one should not even stir the soil under the olive trees nor use the hoe under the vines nor fill the gaps
not agree with that dictum of Arabin in the name of Arella, while the other who says that the offender is not flogged did agree with the dictum of Arabin in the name of Arella. Not necessarily it can be maintained that nobody agrees with the dictum of Arella as reported by Arabin as to the one who says that the offender is flogged. It of course is in order, while the other who says the offender is not flogged may tell you thus consider pruning comes within the general process of sowing and great gathering within the general process of reaping. What rule did the all merciful intend to inculcate by inserting these secondary processes into the text to indicate that only for these secondary processes specified in the text is one to be held liable, but for any other secondary process he is not to be held liable? But is he not surely it is taught thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard? This only forbids me sowing or pruning whence is forbidden weeding going or the trimming of wilted parts from the instructive form of the text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not which means no manner of work in thy field no manner of work in thy vineyard whence is derived the rule not to cut back shoots or thin twigs or put up props for fruit trees from the same instructive text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not which means no manner of work in thy field no manner of work in thy vineyard whence is derived it rule not to manure or remove stones or dust or fumigate the trees from the instructive text thy field thou shalt not thy vineyard thou shalt not that is no manner of work in thy field no manner of work in thy vineyard am I then to say that one may not stir the soil under the olive trees nor use the hoe under the vines nor fill the open gaps under the olives with water nor make drills for the vines there is the instructive wording of the text thy field thou shalt not so and thy Vineyard thou shalt not prune now sowing was already embraced in the general terms of the ordinance why then was it singled out for mention for the purpose of providing ground for an analogy that just as sowing has the special quality of being a work common to field and vineyard so is any other work that is common to field and orchard forbidden that is only rabbinically and the text is just as a mere support Talmud, Masmod couldn't be Talmud, Masmod couldn't be when Ardini came. From Palestine he said the discussion went on possibly you might say that the offender be flogged even for the extension but the teaching was concluded to prove that he was exempt but said he I know not which was the teaching nor what was actually meant by extension R. L. A. Z. Repetaf said that the extension had reference to the inclusion of plowing as a punishable offense and the argument proceeded thus possibly you might say that he should be flogged for plowing in the Sabbatical year the rule being inferred by treating the sabbatical ordinance as a case of general particular general then the teaching was concluded to prove exemption for if it the flogging were correct what is the legal import of all those particulars set out in the text are you had and said that the extension had reference to the extra days of restriction which the sages had added prior to new year and the argument proceeded thus possibly you might say that he should be flogged for plowing during the extended extra period prior to new year which is based on the text in plowing time and in reaping time thou shalt rest then the teaching was concluded to prove exemption from a flogging as we shall seek to explain presently what is meant by the days of restriction prior to new year according to what we learned up to what date may plowing be done in a tree field orchard in the pre-sabbatical year Beth I say as long as it is for the benefit of the fruit path. Hillel say up to the feast of weeks and the practical effect of one ruling is much the same as that of the other and up to what date may they plow a white field in the pre-sabbatical year up to when the moisture gives out and as long as people till for planting their cucumber and gourd bed said are simian if that is so you have handed over the Torah for every individual to determine for himself the right time no I say a white field they may till up to Passover and a tree field up to the feast of weeks and Beth Hillel say up to Passover and are simian because he reported in the name of our Joshua B. Levi who had it from Barkipur that Rabban Gamaliel and his Beth Din took a vote on these two terminal periods and abrogated them said are zero to our about some say Rush Lakish said to our Yohanan how could Rabban Gamaliel and his Beth Din abrogate a measure instituted by Beth Shammai and Beth Hillel surely we learned no Beth Din has power to nullify the words ruling of another Beth did unless it be superior to it in learning and number he was astonished for a while then he replied I say they thus have stipulated among themselves that whoever might thereafter wish to abrogate that measure could come and abrogate it but was it their measure was it not an ancient halachah of Moses from Sinai as in fact R.C. reported are Yohanan to have said in the name of Arnihudi a man hailing from the valley of Beth or on that the laws of ten saplings the willow and the water Libation were halachah of Moses from Sinai said R. Isaac when we received on tradition that law of extra restriction as an ancient halachah it was only in reference to thirty days prior to the new year thereafter came those of Beth Shammai and Hillel and instituted the cessation from Passover and the feast of weeks and at the same time they stipulated with reference to their measure that whoever might thereafter wish to abrogate them might come and abrogate them but were these to many merely halachah usages were they not based on biblical texts for is it not taught six days thou shalt work but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in plowing time and in reaping time thou shalt rest says our there is no need to be told in the second clause to desist from plowing or reaping in the seventh year since it is already stated elsewhere at length thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard that which rode of itself thou shalt not reap it can be taken only to depart plowing in the pre-sabbatical year Talmud, Masmod Kitane which may have beneficial effects extending into the seventh year and likewise to the reaping of the seventh year's crops which mature in the post-sabbatical year says our Ishmael it is purely a Sabbath law is the plowing year forbidden on Sabbath is optional plowing so is the reaping year mentioned optional reaping outside this law is the reaping of the new barley for the Omer which is a Religious duty by ordinance in fact said Arnam and B. Isaac when we received on tradition that the pre-sabbatic restrictions had their origin in halachah usage this had reference to the permission of tilling for the benefit of saplings whereas the texts are for the prohibition of old trees but since halachah usage allowed tillage down to new year for saplings it is not obvious that old trees were forbidden what we must say therefore is the halachah usage as basis for the prohibition is necessary according to our Ishmael whereas the texts serve as basis according to our Akiba but our Yohanan said that Rabban Gamaliel and his Beth didn't abrogated those restrictions on biblical authority what was the reason he deduced it by equating the term Sabbath common to both the Sabbath year and the Sabbath of creation thus just as in the case of the Sabbath day work is forbidden on the day itself but on the day before and on the day after it is allowed so likewise in the Sabbath year tillage is forbidden during the year itself, but in the year before and in the year after it is allowed to this Arashi demurred on the view that it the restriction is a halacha usage can a gazirisha wa deduction come and eradicate a halacha usage and likewise on the view that it is based on a biblical text can a gazirisha wa come and eradicate a text but no said Arashi Rabban Gamaliel and his Beth didn't concurred with Ari Ishmael who held that the pre-sabbatical restrictions were based on halacha usage and when did the tradition of such halacha usage apply during the time when the temple was still standing like that of the water libation but in times when the temple is no longer standing the tradition of this halacha usage does not apply but it may not be watered from stored rain nor by that of a swipe well it is quite correct to prohibit water from a swipe well because that is a rather extra trouble but rain water what? Trouble is there in using it said RL reporting are Yohanan rainwater is prohibited as a precaution on account of the swipe well Arashi said rainwater itself may sometimes come to be just as difficult to draw as the water of a swipe well and they differ on the statement of Arzera for Arzera said that Rabbi B. Jeremiah citing Samuel said that rivers drawing from adjoining water pools may be used for watering during the festival week one master is in agreement with the statement of Arzera while the other is not in agreement with the statement of Arzera the text above stated Arzera said that Rabbi B. Jeremiah citing Samuel said that rivers drawing from adjoining water pools may be used for watering during the festival week Arzera put all objection to him Arzera but not watered from stored rain nor by that of a swipe well said Arzera to him Jeremiah my son these Babylonian pools are like water pools that do not fail our rabbis taught ditches and pools even Though filled with water on the day before the festival are debarred from being used for watering during the festival week but if a canal passes between them they may be used said our papa this is only provided that the greater part of that field obtains its supply from that canal or Ashi said that they may be used even if the greater
Festival week said Rabbah, thus by Rabbah comes sir put a ban on him said Rabbah to him but is it not taught one may raise for vegetables to be eaten replied Rabbah do you think that this medallion means one may raise water in buckets no what medallion means is Talmud, Masmod could be Talmud, Masmod could be to pull out vegetables as we learned if one is engaged in thinning vines just as he may thin his own so also he may thin those due to the poor so our Jude Armeir says he is permitted to attend to his own but not to those of the poor said Rabbah but it is taught explicitly one may raise water for vegetables if they are to be eaten said Rabbah thus by Rabbah if it is thus taught that settles the matter nor may small basins be formed about the vines what is meant by Ujith said Rabbah Judah what we call banki it is also taught us these are Ujith lightning done about the roots of olives and at the roots of vines but this is not so for did. Not Rab Judah allowed the family of Barzitai to make banki in their vineyards. This is not difficult. The one statement in the mission refers to fresh trenchings. The other Rab Judah refers to retrenching. Our Eliezer B. Ezariah says a water channel may not be newly made during the festival week nor in the sabbatical year, but the sages say it is perfectly in order in regard to the festival week because he performs laborious work. But what reason can there be against making a channel in the sabbatical year? Our Zara and our Abu B. Memel differ in the matter. One says it is forbidden because the digger seems to be doing spading in his field. The other says because he is there by preparing the banks for sowing. What is the practical difference between the two explanations? There is a difference where water comes along forthwith. According to the one who says that it is because he is preparing the banks for sowing, there is still an objection. But according to the one who Says that it is because he seems to be doing spading, there is none but the one who objects on the ground that he seems to be doing spading. Should he not likewise object on the ground that he seems to be preparing the bank for sowing? Rather, the practical difference between them is where he takes the mold from the trench and throws it outside. According to the one who says that it is because he seems to be preparing the banks for sowing, there is no objection. Whereas, according to the one who says that it is because he seems to be spading, there is still an objection. But he who takes the view that he seems to be preparing the banks for sowing, should he not likewise admit the objection that he seems to be doing spading? No, because one who does spading as soon as he takes up a spadeful, he puts it down again in its place. Amimar taught this clause of the mission with the explanation that RLA's or BSRI forbids making a channel because he seems to be doing spading in. His field but felt some difficulty about it in view of another statement of R. Eliezer B. Ezra. Could R. Eliezer B. Ezra said he upheld the view that wherever one seems to be spading his field it is forbidden and he contrasted that with the statement in the following mission one may lay up a store of manure in his field. R. Meir says he may not until he places it either three handbreadths below or three handbreadths above the surface if he had some small quantity already there. He may go on adding there to R. Eliezer B. Ezra says even then he may not until he puts it down either three handbreadths below or raises it three handbreadths above the surface or places it on a rock. R. Zara and R. Abu B. Memel explained the seeming discrepancy one said the latter mission means where for instance he has had the place excavated the other said the reason there is because the manure heap itself attests his intention and a channel that has got out of order may be re Paired what is meant by out of order said Arab it means that if it is now for instance but one handbreadth in depth he may restore it to a depth of six handbreadths it is obvious that to restore it from half a handbreadth to the original three seeing that there was originally scarcely any flow of water it is nothing at all to deepen it front two handbreadths to the original twelve which involves extra exertion is not allowed what about deepening it front two handbreadths to the original seven do we argue that as in the first instance it was explained above he deepens it by five handbreadths from one to six so here he deepens it by five handbreadths from two to seven or maybe that as in this instance he actually deepens the channel by an extra handbreadth there is extra exertion and hence it is forbidden it stands undecided Abbe allowed the people of Harmek to clear away the growths obstructing the canal or Jeremiah allowed the people of Sakatha. To dredge the canal that had become blocked, Arashi allowed the people of Mathamahaja to clear obstructions from the river Barna, saying that as the public obtained their drinking water from it, it was virtually a pressing public need, and we learn that all public needs may be performed. Talmud, Masmod, Kitane, and impaired water works in the public domain may be repaired and cleaned out, that is to say, only to repair but not to be dug afresh. Said our Jacob is reporting our Yohan, and this was taught only where there is no public need, but where there is public need for it, even fresh digging is allowed, and where there is a public need is digging allowed, surely it is taught while stitches or caverns of a private person may be cleaned out, and needless to say, those of the public, but while stitches or caverns of the public may not be dug, and still less those of a private person does not that mean that digging is not allowed, even where the public has need of it, no only where the Public has no need of it, then similarly the reference to a private person is where the private person has no need of it, but in that case is cleaning out allowed. Surely it is taught while stitches or caverns of a private person may have water run into them, but they may not be cleaned out nor have their cracks plastered, but those of the public may be cleaned out and their cracks may be plastered. But what else are we to say but that the private person has need of it, in which case the references to the public is similarly where the public has need of it, but where the public has need of it is digging forbidden. Surely it is taught while stitches or caverns of a private person may have water run into them or be cleaned out, but their cracks may not be plastered, nor may the scourings be put into them, nor may they be plastered with cement, but those of the public may be dug and plastered with cement, but if so the first barrier is difficult, explain it thus while stitches or caverns of a Private person may be cleaned out providing he has need of them and needless to say those of the public when the public has need of them as then even digging is allowed but while stitches or caverns of the public are not to be dug when the public has no need of them still less those of a private person as when a private person has no need of them even cleaning out is not allowed our ashi remarked our own mission is also precisely worded to the same effect as it states and all public needs may be performed what is the force of all is it not meant to include digging no it is to include other instances such as are taught in the following the public commissioners go forth to clear the roads of thorns to mend the broadways and main highways and to measure the ritual pools and if any ritual pools be found short of 40 cubic seahs of water they train a continuous flow into it to ensure 40 seahs and whence do we know that if they did not go forth and attend to all these public needs and if any blood be shed there through this neglect scripture lays blame on them as if they themselves had shed it from the instructive text and so blood be upon thee but surely the mission does state these instances expressly and roads broadways and ritual water pools and all public needs may be performed what else then may be included under this word all is it not digging afresh if required by the public this proves it and gravesides may be marked are Simeon because he said where is an indication in the Torah that gravesides should be marked in the instructive text and when they pass through the land and one see the man's bone and shall he set up a sign by it said Rabbanu to Arashi but who told us that before Ezekiel came said the other accepting your view with regard to the statement made by our histon namely this point we do not learn from the law of our master Moses we learn it from the words of prophet Ezekiel the son of Buzano. Alien uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary we might equally ask who had told us that before Ezekiel came and stated it only that was first learned by oral tradition and then Ezekiel came and gave us a textual basis for it here too it was first learned as an oral tradition and then Ezekiel came and gave us a textual basis for it or about suggested that it may be derived from this text and he shall cry unclean unclean that is impurity cries out to the passerby and tells him keep off and Arutiel the grandson of the elder Arutiel said the same that impurity cries out and tells him keep off but was this text intended for this lesson it is required for what has been taught and he shall cry unclean unclean this teaches that one must needs make his distress known to many that many pray for mercy on his behalf if that be so let the text read unclean but once why has it unclean unclean twice over infer from it the two points Abbe said that the rule may be derived from here and put not a stumbling block before the blind. Our Papa said, and he will say, Cast ye up, cast ye up, clear the way. Our Highness suggested, Take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Our Joshua, the son of Aridi, said, And thou shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. Marzutra said, And ye shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. Our Ashi said, And they shall have charge of
Indicate the presence of a human spinous skull or the major members of a skeleton or the major number of lesser bones thereof and the markings are not made in cases of certainty but only in cases of uncertainty these are instances of uncertainty leafy bowers jutting ledges and a and the markings are not placed on the side of the impurity itself in order to avoid wasting what is preserved as pure nor is the marking placed far away from the spot in order to avoid wasting. Any space of the land of Israel but does not flesh of an olive size from a human body diffused defilement under a tent for we learn the following diffused defilement by tent overspreading flesh of an olive size from a human dead body said our papa we speak here of an olive size precisely which after all shrinks to less far better is it that terima and other meats that are pure should be burnt unnecessarily on one occasion than that they should be burnt continuously and these are instances of uncertainty leafy bowers and jutting ledges leafy bowers means a tree which overspreads the ground and jutting ledges are stones projecting from wall enclosure and a paris area as we learned one who runs a plow over a grave makes the side of paris area and how much thereof has he thus affected the full length of a furrow 100 cubits each way but does a paris area convey defilement by tent surely rab judah citing samuel said that one a pilgrim may walk across a Paris area cautiously fanning his way in front of him moreover our Judah BMI in the name of Allah said that a Paris area which has been much trampled is considered as clean said our Papa this discrepancy is not difficult to explain the former statement refers to a field where a grave has become lost whereas the latter refers to a field where a grave had been run over by the plow but is a field where a grave has been lost correctly called a Paris area yes indeed for we learned there are three kinds of Paris areas a, a field where a grave has been lost b a field where a grave has been run over by the plow and see the weepers field what is the weepers field our Joshua B Abba explained in the name of Allah that it is a field where they bid final farewell to the dead and wherefore is it held as a defiling area said our his is reporting by me it is because there is here a possibility of abandoned ownership but does not a field where a grave has been run over by the plow required to be marked surely it is taught if one came upon a marked field without knowing its character then if there are trees on id is thereby indicated that a grave in it had been run over by the plow if there are no trees it is thereby indicated that a grave has been lost in it our judah says the presence of trees is no criterion until there is some elder or disciple to attest it for not all are well versed on the subject of proper marking said our papa what is taught in this latter barrier refers to a field in which a grave had been lost and which had consequently been marked if there are trees on it, it is thereby indicated that a grave had been run over by the plow subsequently if there are no trees on it, it is indicated that a grave had been lost in it but is there not a danger that the trees are situated within the field and the grave was outside as well as said elsewhere that we speak of a case where the trees are situated on the boundaries of it Field here likewise they were situated on the boundary line Talmud, Mosmod Kitten but perhaps the defilement lies within the field while the trees stand on the outer sides of it they were planted irregularly or if you like I may explain by what was said above nor is the marking place far away from the spot in order to avoid wasting any space of the land of Israel Arjuna says the presence of trees is no criterion until there be some elder or disciple to attest that it has been plowed for not all are well versed in the subject of marking said Abbe you may infer from here that when a scholar is resident in a place all local matters devolve upon him said Rab Judah if one comes across a single stone which is marked with lime the space under it is defiled if two stones with markings then if there is lime on the space between them the space between is defiled and if there is no lime between them the intervening space is clean even though there is no sign of Tilling there but surely it is taught if one comes upon one stone which is marked the space under it is defiled if on two stones if there is tilling between them the intervening space is clean if not it is defiled said our papa here it is a case where the lime had been poured on top of the stones and got spread here and there now if there is any tilling in the space between them the space between is clean because it may be presumed that the splash lime had got peeled off by the tilling whereas if there is not any trace of tilling the lime is intended to mark the space between and it is defiled said rc if one boundary is marked that side alone is defiled but the rest of the entire field is clean if two are marked those alone are defiled but the rest of the entire field is clean if three are marked those are defiled but the rest of the entire field is clean if the four boundaries are marked they are clean and the entire field within is defiled for the Master said nor is the marking place far away from the spot in order to avoid wasting space of the land of Israel and public commissioner set out also to inspect diverse seed crops but do we set out for inspecting seed crops during the festival week this is contradicted by the following on the first of Adar announcements are made about the contribution of shekels and about the diverse crops on the 15th thereof the scroll of Esther is read in the ancient walled cities and commissioners go forth to clear the roads of thorns men the broadways measure the ritual water pools and to perform all public needs and they mark the grave sites and go forth to inspect the diverse seed crops our Eliezer and our Jose Bihanna gave differing explanations one said the latter statement speaks of earlier crops the other of later crops the other said in one case they go out to attend to grain crops and the others to vegetable crops RC reporting our Yohan and said the rule late. Down in the Mishnah applies only when the sproutings of the season are late and had not become recognizable before then but where the sproutings had become recognizable before they went forth about them even earlier why do we particularly set out during the festival week our Jacob reporting our Yohanan explained that it was because the wages given for labor are then low with us our Zibit or some say our Meshachia said from the aforementioned explanation you may infer that when pay was given it was given them out of the terima of the shekel chamber for if you should suppose that they the owners of the fields themselves paid what difference does it make to us let them pay whatever they ask and how much constitutes an admixture said our Samuel B. Isaac the same as we learned every SEO of seeds that contains one quarter of a cab Talmud, Mosmod can be of another kind must be reduced but it is taught that the authorities introduced a rule that they should declare. Ownerless the crop of the entire field that is not difficult to explain the former mission states the practice before the new rule while the latter of the very that gives the practice after the introduction of the rule as it is distinctly taught formerly they the public commissioners used to uproot the diverse crop throwing it to the cattle at which the owners were doubly pleased for one thing that they weeded their fields for them and again that they threw the forbidden crop to the cattle thereupon they made a new regulation that they should pull up the forbidden crop and cast it on the road and still the owners were greatly pleased because they weeded their fields thereupon they instituted that they should declare ownerless the crop of the entire field mission our Eliza B. Jacob says water may be drawn from one tree to another tree provided the whole field is not watered in this way seeds that have not had any drink before the festival week may not be Watered during the festival week, the sages, however, allow it in both the one case and the other. Gemara not entire field said, Rab Judah, if the field has a clay soil, he may water it. It is likewise taught when they said that it is forbidden to water them during the festival week. They referred only to seeds that had not drunk before the festival, but seeds that had drunk before the festival may again be watered during the festival week. And if the field was a clay soil, it is allowed to water it. And a bare field is not watered during the festival week, but the sages allow it in the one case and in the other. Said Rabbana, you may infer from here that a garden plot may be sprinkled in the festival week. For in the case of a bare field, why is it permitted? Because it just quickens a tardy soil here too. It just quickens a tardy soil. Our rabbis taught a white field may be sprinkled in the sabbatical year, but not during the festival week. But it has been taught it may be. Sprinkled either in the sabbatical year or during the festival week said Arhuna this discrepancy is not difficult to explain the former quotation states the view of our Eliezer B. Jacob and the latter that of the rabbis another very the taught a white field may be sprinkled in the pre-sabbatical year so that the greens may sprout in the sabbatical year name or a white field may be sprinkled in the sabbatical year so that the greens may sprout better in the post-sabbatical year. Mishnah moles and mice may be trapped in a tree field or white field in the usual way during the festival weekend in the sabbatical year but the sages say in the tree field in the usual way and in the white field not in the usual way and a breach may be blocked up during the festival weekend in the sabbatical year one may build in the usual way tomorrow what is Eshat said Rab Judah it is a creature which has no eyes Rabbi B. Ishmael some say are Yamar Bishalimia said what may be the text. For this let them the wicked be as a snail which mel
Made of twigs and daphne stakes in a very thick, his toddler's rubble is piled up without being plastered with clay. Said artist, this is taught only with regard to a garden wall, but the wall of a court is built in the usual way. Might one suggest that the following supports him? A wall that is bulging out into the public domain may be pulled down and built in the usual way because it constitutes a danger to the passers by. Not necessarily there. The reason is as stated because it constitutes a danger. Some put the argument as follows: Come and here, a wall that is bulging out into the public domain may be pulled down and built in the ordinary way because it constitutes a danger. That is where it constitutes a danger. He may, but if it is not a danger, he may not build. May we see in this a confutation of artist? Not necessarily as artist might reply. There he may pull down and build, whereas here he may build, but not pull down. Then let one in that case likewise merely. Pull down and not build if so he might refrain even from pulling down our ashi said our mission here gives an indication to the same effect for it states but in the sabbatical year one builds in the ordinary way now if what is it that he may block up the breach if it means the wall of his courtyard does this need to be stated it can only be there for a breach in his garden wall although he might seem to be doing it in order to safeguard his fruits you can infer it from this mission r but here says an initial inspection of leper symptoms may be made during the festival week for the priest to make a lenient pronouncement on the findings but not to make a severe pronouncement but the sages say it is to be made neither for a lenient nor for a severe pronouncement Gamara it is taught our mayor says that an inspection is made during the festival week to make a lenient pronouncement but not for a severe one our jose says neither for making a lenient nor a severe pronouncement as if you arrive at the necessity of having to make a lenient pronouncement on the findings, you are likewise bound to make a severe pronouncement. Said Rabbi Armeyer's statement seems appropriately applied to the case of an observational detention and our Jose's to that of a decided leper. Said Rabbi, in the case of one who is as yet nominally clean, all are agreed that he is not examined in regard to one under preliminary observational detention. All agree that he is examined where a difference of opinion arises is Talmud. Moss mode can be in the case of one under a second observational detention. One master Armeyer considers that it is left to the discretion of the priest so that if the patient is found clean, he declares him clean, and if he is found unclean, he holds his peace. While the other master Arhose considers that since it is written, this is the law of the plague and leprosy to pronounce it clean or unclean, the priest has no choice. The master said. Said Rabbi R. Jose's statement seems appropriately applied to the case of a decided leper and our mayors to one under observational detention, but the reverse is taught elsewhere. Both versions are very intended interpretations of Rabbi's observation. One authority is of the opinion that the patient prefers the company of the world at large during the festival, while the other authority holds that he prefers to retain his wife's company. Is that to say that according to Rabbi, confirmed leper may have the use of the conjugal bed? Yes, it is taught, but he shall dwell outside his tent seven days. That is, he shall be precluded from the use of the conjugal bed for tent means nothing but living with his wife. As it is said, go say unto them, return ye unto your tents. Our Judah says it is written, and after he is cleansed, they shall reckon for him seven days, which implies that he is precluded only while counting the seven days after he is cleansed, but not while. He is a confirmed leper. Our Jose B. Judah says, I take it to mean he is precluded while counting seven days, and all the more so while he is a confirmed leper. And said, Our High, I argued on this point before Rabbi. Our Master said, I you taught that King Jotham could not have been born unto Uzziah who saved during the time that he was a confirmed leper. To which Rabbi replied, And I said so too. Wherein do they differ? Our Jose B. Judah argues that as the All Merciful has plainly indicated that a convalescent leper shall dwell outside his tent while counting the seven days of preliminary ritual purification. It is all the more to be expected that he be apart from his wife while being in the state of a confirmed leper. And the other Master Rabbi argues that what has been plainly indicated is to be kept as indicated, and what has not been indicated is not to be assumed as indicated. Reverting to Rabbi's explanation above, do you mean to say that the postponement of an Unfavorable pronouncement or of the time of inspection is solely dependent on the discretion of the priest. Indeed, as it is taught in the following, and on a day when raw flesh shall be seen in him, he shall be unclean, and the priest shall let on the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean, which means that there is a day when you do see it in him, as well as a day when you do not see it in him. And said to the sages that if a groom develops symptoms of leprosy, they grant him delay of inspection to the end of the seven days of the marriage feast, whether it be his person or his house or his garment that is affected. And likewise, if the symptoms develop during a festival, they grant him the patient all the seven days of the festival. Thus, our Judah rabbi says there is no need to resort to this text, as it says, and the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes in to see the plague that all that is in the house be not made unclean. Now, if the inspection is here delayed for his convenience, which is just an optional matter, may it not all the more be deferred for his due observance of a religious obligation? What is the actual issue between them? Said Abay, merely the different expository results obtained by each from his text. And Rab said it is a delay of inspection in an optional matter that is the issue between them. Arjuta holding that from the other text cited above by Rabbi, we cannot learn this. Is it? Is an anomaly Talmud, Masmod, Kitten, inasmuch as wood and stones elsewhere are not subject to ceremonial uncleanness, whereas here in a house affected by leprosy they are made subject to uncleanness. And on the other hand, Rabbi says that this text is also needed for had the All Merciful prescribed only, and on a day when raw flesh shall be seen in him, I might have said that postponement of inspection or pronouncement on the findings is granted only for the due observance of. A religious obligation, but not for the sake of an optional matter. Therefore, did the All Merciful prescribe also, and the priest shall command again? Had the All Merciful prescribed only, and the priest shall command that they empty the house? I might have said that postponement is granted in the case of these effects of the house, because the uncleanness is not that of a person, but where the uncleanness is that of a person, I might say that the priest should inspect him without delay. Therefore, it is necessary to have both texts. The master said, "There is a day when you do see it in him, and there is a day when you do not see it in him." How is this implied? Said Abay, "If it is just so, the divine law should have written on a day when what then is the import of and on a day when from this you infer that there is a day when you see in him, and there is a day when you do not see in him." Rabbi said, "The whole text is redundant altogether. For if it be just so, divine law." Might have had and when raw flesh is seen in him, what then is the import of the amplification? And on a day from this, infer that there is a day when you do see it in him, and there is a day when you do not see it in him. And Abay he needs that to teach that the inspection is held by day and not at night. And whence derives Rabbi this point by day and not at night? It is derived by him from according to all the sight of the eyes of the priest. And Abay he needs a text to exclude a person blind in one eye inspecting a leper, but does not Rabbi also require this text for that same point? Yet he does so also. But then whence does he derive the point by day, but not at night? He derives it from like as a plague was seen by me in the house that is seen by me, not by the aid of my candlelight. And Abay if he did learn from there, I might have said that these restrictions obtain only where the uncleanness is not personal of one's body, but where uncleanness is that. Of the body, it may be inspected also by one's candlelight. Therefore, the original text conveys it to us. Best mission. Furthermore, our mayor said a man may gather his father's and mother's bones, since this is an occasion of joy for him. Our Jose says it is an occasion of mourning for him. A person should not stir up wailing for his dead, nor hold a lamentation for him thirty days before a feast. Tomorrow, as it is a joy for him, the following was cited in contrast to this one who gathers his father's or mother's bones, holds himself in mourning for them all the day, but in the evening he does not hold himself in mourning for them any longer. And our his commented thereon, even if he had them by him tied up in a sheet, said Abay, I should suggest it means because the joyousness of the feast prevails with him. A person should not stir up a wailing for his dead. What is the meaning of stirring up a wailing for one's dead? Rab said in Palestine, it is customary that whenever a Professional lamenter comes round. People say, "Let all those who are sore at heart weep with him." Thirty days before a feast, why just thirty days? Our Kahana said that Rab Judah is reporting. Rab told him that once it happened that a man saved money to go up for the feast to Jerusalem. When a professional lamenter came and stopped at his door, and the wife took her husband's savings and gave them to him, and so he was prevented from going. Then it was that day
Courtyard we learn here what our rabbis taught elsewhere they may do all that the dead requires they cut his hair and wash a garment for him and make him a box of boards that had been sawn on the day before the festival Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says they may even bring trees and he saws them into boards in his house behind closed doors Mishnah one may not take a wife during the festival week whether a virgin or a widow nor effect a Levirate marriage as it is a rejoicing for the groom but one may remarry his divorced wife and a woman may make her adornments in the festival week our Judah says she may not use lime as that is a temporary disfigurement to her an ordinary person sews in the usual way but a craftsman sews a tuck stitch and the cords in bed frames may be interlaced our Jose says they may only be tightened Gemara a rejoicing for the groom and if it is a rejoicing for him what is a miss said Rab Judah is reporting Samuel and so said our Eliezer is reporting our Ashaya and some say our Eliezer is reporting our Hannah it is barred because one rejoicing may not be merged in another rejoicing Rabbi son of Arhuna said it is barred because he abandons the rejoicing of the festival and busies himself with that of his wife said Abay to our Joseph that explanation of Rabbi son of Arhuna is the same as that given by Rab for our Daniel B. Katna reporting Rab said whence is the ruling that one may not take a wife during the festival week for it is said and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast that is in thy feast but not with thy new wife instead Ula said it is because of the exertion it occasions our Isaac B. Napaha said because it may cause a decline in marriage and parenthood an objection was raised all those who have been declared to be forbidden to take wives during the festival week Talmud, Masmod Kitten are free to marry on the day previous to the festival which presents a difficulty to all those authorities there is no Difficulty as to one who states that it is forbidden because of the rejoicing it may be said that the main rejoicing of a marriage celebration lasts mainly one day as to the one who states that it is because of the exertion it occasions here too the main exertion falls on one day as to the one who says that it is because it may lead to a decline in marriage and parenthood it may be said that for the sake of one day a person would not put himself off indefinitely whence do we derive the principle that rejoicing should not be merged in rejoicing from the text so Solomon made the feast at that time and all Israel with him a great congregation from the entrance of Hamath unto the brook of Egypt before the Lord our God seven days and seven days even fourteen days now if it is the fact that one rejoicing may be merged in another rejoicing he should have kept back the consecration ceremony of the temple for the time of the feast and then have held it for seven days. Concurrently for both one and the other may be that the rule is only that we should not deliberately keep a marriage for the time of a festival but where it so turns out to be opportune we might as well hold it then if so Solomon should have left some small part unfinished but perhaps this could not be done because we broke no delay in the building of the temple then he could have left say an L of the raven scare palisade but it may be asked the L of the raven scare palisade was an essential part of the temple building rather it is derived from the fact that the text is redundant consider it is written 14 days wherefore the need of 7 days and 7 days infer from this that these first 7 days and those second 7 days were distinct from each other our Barnak reporting our Yohanan said that that year Israel did not observe the day of atonement whereat they were perturbed saying that perhaps the enemies of Israel had thereby incurred their doom were out of Bath Coal came forth and announced to them all of you are destined for the life of the world to come what was the basis of their exposition they are due to force you arrive as if within the tabernacle the sanctity of which was not to be in perpetuity yet an individual sacrificial gifts were allowed at the consecration to be offered on the Sabbath day which ordinarily is an offense punishable by stoning to death all the more is it the case that it is permitted with the temple the sanctification of which is to be forever and with public offerings and that on the day of atonement whose desecration is an offense punished only by Gareth but then why were they perturbed because there in the former case the offerings were brought as dues to the supreme being whereas here they were brought for their own common needs and here too should they not have made their offerings without partaking on that day of any meat or drink there is no joy of celebration. Without eating and drinking, whence do we know that at the consecration of the tabernacle the Sabbath restrictions were suspended? Shall I say because it is written on the first day so and so offered on the seventh day so and so offered? Then say I may be it means the seventh day in the order of the offering said Arnam and B. Isaac. The text says on the day of the eleventh day, just as a day is continuous, so were the eleven days continuous, but perhaps it means continuous on days. Appropriate then there is yet another such text on the day of the twelfth day, just as a day was continuous, so had the whole twelve days been entirely continuous, but that too may be means only continuous on days appropriate if that be so. Why do I require two peculiarly worded texts again? Whence do we know that during the consecration of the temple the restrictions of the day of atonement were suspended? Shall I say because it is written even fourteen days, maybe it means days appropriate. That is learned from the analogy between the repeated word day here and in the other place where out of Bath Kol came forth and announced to them all of you are destined for the life of the world to come and whence know we that pardon was granted them for our Talifah taught it is written on the eighth day he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had shown unto David his servant and to Israel his people. To their tents that is they went home and found their wives in a state of purity to receive their husbands joyful that is that they had enjoyed the radiance of the Sheshanah and glad of heart that is each man's wife conceived and bore him a male child for all the goodness that is of Bath Kol had come forth and announced to them all of you are destined for the life of the world to come that the Lord had shown unto David his servant and to Israel his people it is perfectly clear as to what is referred to by all the goodness shown to Israel his people as indicating that God had granted them pardon for their sin against the non-observance of the day of atonement but what is the point of the goodness shown unto David his servant said Rab Judah is reporting Rab at the moment when Solomon wanted to bring the ark into the temple the gates held fast together Solomon recited a prayer of four and twenty expressions of intercession but had no response he began anew and said lift up your heads O ye gates and again he had no response as soon as however he said now therefore arise O Lord God thou and the ark of thy strength O Lord turn not away the face of thine anointed remember the good deeds of David thy servant he was answered forthwith at that moment the faces of David's foes turned livid like the blackened sides of a pot and all became aware that the holy one blessed be he had pardoned David that misdeed our Jonathan Bias, I and our Judah son of Proslite. Parents were studying the section of vows at the school of our Simeon Biohe they had taken leave from him in the evening but in the morning they came and again took leave from him said he to them but did you not take leave of me yesternight said they to him our master you taught us a disciple who had taken leave from his master and remained overnight in the city must needs take leave from him once again for it is said on the eighth day he king Solomon sent the people away and they blessed it. King and then it is written and on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away hence we learn from here that a disciple who had taken leave from his master and remained overnight in the city must needs take leave from him once again said he to his son these are men of countenance go along with them that they may bless you he went and found them comparing text with text it is written balance the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established and it is written. Lest thou shoots balance the path of life it is not difficult to explain the former text applies where an obligation can be discharged through another person Talmud, Masmod can be the latter where the obligation cannot be discharged through another person again they were sitting and inquiring into the following it is written she wisdom is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her which implies that heaven's demands of you are comparable to her again it is written and all things desirable are not to be compared unto her which means that even things that are of heaven's desire are not comparable to her the former text applies where the duty can be discharged through others the latter where the duty cannot be discharged through others then turning to him they said what is your business here he replied father told me go along with them that they may bless you said they to him may it be heaven's pleasure that you sow and mow not that what you bring in go not out that what goes out you bring not in that your house be desolate and your inn be inhabited that your board be disturbed and you behold not a new year when he came home to his father he said to him so far were they from blessing me that they even distressed me sorely his father asked him what did they say to you they said thus and thus said the father to him those are all blessings that you sow and mow not means that you beget children and they do not die that what you bring in go not out means that you bring home daughters in law and your sons do not die so that their wives need
your God and there is none else and my people shall never be ashamed and a woman may make her toilet during the festival week our rabbis taught these are permitted in women's adornment she plates her hair treats her eyes with coal fixes of parting trims her hair and nails and puts rouge on her face some say she may use a razor for her privy parts our Hista's wife made her toilet in front of her daughter-in-law Arhina behind and a set before our Hista, as he said he said that the instances mentioned in the mission apply only to a young woman but not to an elderly woman said our Hista to him God even to your mother even to your mother's mother even if she be standing at the brink of the grave as the saying goes at 60 as at 6 the sound of a timbrel makes her nimble Arjuda says she should not use lime it is taught Arjuda says a woman should not use lime as it is a disfigurement to her Arjuda concedes however that if it is a lime preparation that can be peeled off during the festival week she may apply it during the festival week because although it is irksome to her at the moment it is a pleasure to her afterwards but does Arjuna hold this view surely we learned elsewhere Arjuna said debts may be recovered from pagan creditors during their festivals as it is irksome to them they said to him although it is irksome for them at the moment they feel pleased afterwards said Arnam and B. Isaac do not cite the rules for the festival week as they all derive from the principle that though the task is irksome for the moment it gives satisfaction afterwards Rabin remarked that the recovery of debts is allowed because to a pagan the payment of a debt is always irksome Rab Judah reporting Rab said the daughters of Israel who attain puberty before the normal age if they are poor put on a cosmetic preparation made of lime richer girls put on fine flour and the wealthy girls put on oil of myrrh as it is said six mouths with the oil of Mer, what is this oil of mer? Said Arhuna Bihai, it is what is called stacti. Our Jeremiah BMI said it is oil obtained from olives that have reached but a third of their normal growth. It is taught Arjuna says Amphison is an oil made of unripe olives that have reached but a third of their normal growth. And why do they put it on? Because it is a depilatory and softens the flesh skin. Arbabai had a dark skinned daughter. He applied to her that unguent one limb at a time. And this brought her a husband with four hundred zuzim. There was a pagan neighbor of his who had a daughter, and he applied it all over her at once. And she died. Whereupon he said, Babai killed my daughter. Said Arnam and Arbabai drinks beer, therefore his daughters needed unguents. But as we do not drink beer, our daughters need no unguents. Talmud, Masmod, Kitten, an ordinary person. So in the usual way, how do we define an ordinary person at the school of Arjane? They said it means anyone who. Cannot draw a needleful during their festivals as the means afforded them by the Jew may go to enhance the heathen celebrations. The settlement of a dead leaves the debtor with an easy mind of stitches in one sweep. Our Jose Behena said it means anyone who cannot sew an even seam on the hem of his tunic, but a craftsman may sew a tuck stitch. What is meant by sewing a tuck stitch? Our Yohanan said it means overstepping. Rabbi B. Samuel said it means that the sticks resemble dog's teeth and the cords may be interlaced in bed frames. Our Jose says they may only be tightened. What is meant by interlacing and what by tightening? When our Dimi came from Palestine, he said that our Habi Abba and R.C. had different views on this, both reporting in the name of Hezekiah and our Yohanan. One said that interlacing meant interlacing both the warp and the woof and that tightening meant putting in the warp without the woof, while the other said that interlacing meant putting in the warp without the Woof and tightening meant that he may tighten the girth cord if it has become slack, but this cannot be correct for our Talafa B. Saul taught and all agreed that no cords may be let in afresh. Now this is perfectly in accord with the one who says that the interlacing permitted in the mission means interlacing both the warp and the woof, and that the tightening that our Jose permitted means putting in the warp without the woof. Hence our Talafa could say and all agreed that no cords may be let in afresh, but according to one who says that interlacing means putting in the warp without the woof, and that tightening means that he may tighten the cord if it has become slack. How do you explain our Talafa B. Saul's statement? For if you say that interlacing the warp and the woof is forbidden, need one at all state that cords are not to be let in afresh. This is a difficulty, said Arnam and B. Isaac to our high B. Abin. Is there anybody who applies the term interlacing to inserting a warp without the well, for surely we learned our Meir says a bed frame is not subject to ritual defilement until three warp spaces in it have been crossed. The fact is that when Rabin came from Palestine, he said that all agree that interlacing means interlacing the warp and woof, but where the difference arose was on the interpretation of tightening. One master held that the tightening that was permitted was inserting the warp without the woof, and the other master held that what was allowed was the tightening of a cord which has become slack. An objection was raised bed frames may be interlaced during the festival week, and needless to say that they may be tightened. These are the words of our Meir. Our Jose says they may be tightened but not interlaced, and some say that tightening may not be done at all. Now here the several views are perfectly understandable according to the one who says that by tightening is meant inserting the warp without the woof, as then some come and express their Descent on that kind of mending, but according to the one who says that by the tightening which is allowed is meant that when a cord has become slack, one may make it tough. And according to the view of some, not even a simple adjustment is allowed. Yes, indeed, because since it is possible temporarily to fill the sag with bedclothes, we should not go to further exertion during the festival week. Mission an oven stove or mill may be set up in position during the festival week. R. Judah says a pair of millstones is not to be compressed for the first time in the festival week. Tomorrow, what is meant by compressing? Rab Judah said that it means chiseling the millstones. R. G. Hyle said it means fixing an eye hole. An objection was raised. An oven or stove or mill may be set up in the festival week, provided that the work is not entirely completed. These are the words of our Eliezer, but the sages say it may even be finished off. R. Judah speaking in his name says a new one may. Be set up and an old mill compressed and some say compressing may not be done at all now this accords well with the one who says that compressing means scoring the millstones hence this process is applicable in the case of an old mill but according to the one who says that it means fixing an eye hole what fixing of an eye hole does an old mill need El may say for instance that it needs widening a little more Arhuna wants hearing someone scraping his millstones during the festival week. Said who is that may he himself suffer desecration that desecrates the festival week he evidently held the view of some say cited above Arhama expounded one may scrape millstones during the festival week in the name of our master they said one may trim the hoofs of the horse he rides or the ass he rides during the festival week Talmud, Masmod couldn't be but not those of the ass turning the mill Rab Judah declared it permissible to trim the hoofs of the ass turning the mill or to set. Up the mill or build a mill or to construct a base for the mill or build a horse stable Rab declared it permissible to curry horses and to construct a bed or make a mattress box Rab allowed bleeding of cattle during the festival week said Abay to him there is a tana who supports you cattle may be bled and no curative means are to be withheld from an animal during the festival week Rab allowed full clothes to be rubbed on what ground it is an ordinary unskilled process said R. Isaac B. Am I citing our his dodge pleats leave ends is forbidden on what ground because that is a craftsman's process Rab said with regard to a man who levels up his ground if it is to even the slope of the threshing floor it is allowed if merely to level the soil it is forbidden how can one tell if he takes up heap soft soil to heap on soft soil or stiff soil to lay on stiff soil it shows that it is done for improving the threshing floor but if he takes up heap soft soil and casts it on the stiff soil this shows that it is for improving the ground Rabba said with regard to one who clears his field of chips of wood if it is for gathering firewood it is allowed if for clearing the ground it is forbidden how can we tell if he picks up the larger pieces and leaves the smaller this shows that it is to gather firewood but if he picks up both large and small this shows that it is to clear the field Rabba said also with regard to one who opens sluices to let water run off into his field if it be to get the fish it is permitted if it is to water the soil it is forbidden how can we tell if he opens two floodgates one above and another below this shows that it is for getting the fish but if only one gate it is obviously for watering the soil Rabba further said with regard to one who trims his palm if it is for the benefit of his beast it is allowed but if for the benefit of the palm it is forbidden how can we tell if he trims one side only this shows that it is for the beast at both one side and the other it is for the benefit of the palm and it is forbidden and furthermore said Rabba those unripe taller gates one may pick but to press them is not permitted our papa remarked that as if these are left the worms get at
Ruling obtains in the rainy season mission a parapet may be put round a roof or a railing round a gallery roughly but not in finished style plaster may be smeared on the crevices and flattened down with a roller with hand or foot but not with ramming tools pivots and sockets lintels lashes bolt locks and door handles that have given way may be repaired during the festival week only they must not be left purposely for the festival week and all preserves that may be eatable in the festival. Week one may put in pickle tomorrow what for instance is meant by putting up a parapet or railing roughly our Joseph explained something like a fence of palm leaves and Daphne stakes a tan taught one may pile up rubble without doping with clay plaster may be smeared on the crevices and flattened down with a roller with hand or foot but not with ramming tools now if you say it is allowed to flatten down with a roller need one be told with hand or foot what it means is one may smear. Plaster on the crevices and flattened down as with a roller by hand or foot but not with ramming tools pivots and sockets lintels lashes bolt locks and door handles that have given way may be repaired during the festival week some contrasted this with the following up to his days the hammer was beating in Jerusalem during the festival week that is up to his days but not thereafter sent Arhuna that is not difficult to explain the reference there is to the smith's hammer while here the tool allowed is the joiner's mallet are his dot to this explanation as according to this some will say that allowed din is forbidden but a faint sound is allowed no set are his dot it is not difficult to explain one the tool allowed here is the bill hook and the other which is not allowed is an ads our papa said that in one statement we have the older view held before the restriction had been introduced and in the other the later view held after the restriction was Introduced Arashi said that one mission expresses our Judah's view and the other our Jose's for our Isaac B of Dimi said who may be the anonymous tanner that holds that work must be done in a different way from the ordinary in working during the festival week even where its postponement would entail loss not our Jose Rubin said whose ruling do we follow nowadays when we raise the pivot cups of the doors during the festival week our Jose's and all preserves that may be eatable in the festival. Week one may put in pickle on bad at the loop everybody engaged in fishing and they brought in fish and Rabba allowed to put them in salt said Abbe to him but why we learned preserves that may be eatable in the festival week one may put in pickle said he Rabba to him since they brought them home with the intention of eating them and if they leave them uneaten they will be spoiled it is similar to a case of business that might be lost and is therefore permitted and some say that Rabba. Actually allowed them to him, but surely we learn preserves that may be eatable. Go fishing, fetch the fish home and put them in salt. Set a in the festival week one may put in pickle. Set he to him. These may be eaten also by means of pressing, as was the case with Samuel when they applied pressure to the fish in salt sixty times and he ate thereof. When Rabbah himself once happened to be at the house of the eggs, a large they prepared for him a dish of fish pressed sixty times and he ate it. Rab was on a festival week once at Barshapir for Ritzabar where they put before him some kind of fish which was a third boiled, a third salted, and a third broiled. Rab said, Add the fisherman told me that a fish is at its best when it is about to turn putrid. Rab also said this. Add the fisherman told me broil the fish with his brother salt, plunge it into its father water, eat it with its son sauce, and drink after it its father water. This too, Rab said, Add the Fisherman told me after eating fish cress and milk occupy your body don't occupy your couch and furthermore said Rab added the fisherman told me after fish cress and milk drink rather water not meat meat and not wine Talmud, Moss mode can be chapter I, I mission if one had already turned his olives when morning or some hindrance befell him or workman disappointed him he may during the festival week put on the beam for the first time and leave it thus until after the festival. These are the words of our Judah our Jose says he may draw off the oil and complete the process and bung the jars in his usual way during the festival week tomorrow the mission begins with morning and finally only deals with the festival week said our Shisha son of Edi this implies that things one is permitted to do during the festival week are forbidden him during the week of his morning our Ashi says not so this wording is cast in the form of no need to say no need to say that. He may put on the beam for the first time during the week of his morning when the restriction on work is but rabbinical but even during the festival week when work is restricted on scriptural grounds the rabbis still permitted where losses involved it was taught in the sense of our shisha son of Edi these are the things they may do for the mourner during his week of mourning if his olives had been turned they may put on for him the beam for the first time or if his one cask is to be bunged or his flax is to be lifted from the reading or his wool is to be lifted from the dive bath and they may besprinkle his field for him when his turn for water rights arrives our Judah says they may even sow for him the plowed field or the field awaiting a flax crop said they the rabbis to him not so if the field is not sowed in the early season it could be sowed in the latter season and if it cannot be sowed with flax let it be sowed with some other kind of crop rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says if his olives had been turned and there is no skilled worker save himself or his cask is ready for bunking and there is no skilled worker save himself or his flax is ready for lifting from the reading or his wool for lifting from the dive and there is no skilled worker save himself such a one may perform his task behind closed doors furthermore said Rabbi Gamaliel if he is a skilled worker engaged in the service of the public or a hairdresser or a bath attendant in the service of the public and the festival is close at hand and there is no skilled worker save him such a one may do the work farm keepers tenant farmers and contractors of labor may have others doing work for the mass drivers camel drivers and bargemen may not work but if they were already engaged on the job or were just then in the hire of others they themselves may do their work a daily worker may not work even in another town one who has others work in hand even if it is a contract job. He may not do it you say even if it is a contract job which implies and all the less so if it is not a contract job on the contrary a contract job is like his own work rather whether it is a contract job or not a contract job he may not do it if his work was placed in the hand of others they may not do it in his own house but in another house they may do it Mary and the son of Rabin and Mar the son of Araha the son of Rabba had a yoke of oxen between them when a misfortune befell Mar the son of Araha the son of Rabba he broke up the team and did not send his animal to work said Arashi a great man like Mar the son of Araha acting in such a manner granted that he minds not his own loss of earning is he not concerned about the loss caused to others surely it is taught but if they were already engaged on the job or were just then in the hire of others these may do their work he Mar however held the view that the case of a prominent man is different Talmud, Mas mode. Kitna Samuel said if non-Jews take work on contract they may not work for a Jew within the limits of the Sabbath boundary but outside the boundary they may say our Papa even outside the boundary we do not say they may say where there is no town in the vicinity but where there is a town nearby it is forbidden said our Meshachia and even if there be not a town close by we still do not say they may carry on the work save on Sabbaths and festivals when there are not frequent Jewish passers by but during the festival week when people are often passing to and from the place it is forbidden Marzitra son of Arnaman had a mansion erected for himself by non-Jewish contractor builders outside the boundary our Safra and Arhuna behind and happened to come thither and did not enter his house and some report that he Arnaman himself did not enter the building but did not Samuel say that contractors may not carry on their work within the boundary but outside the boundary they May the case of a prominent man is different. Some say his servant had assisted them with straw or ham allowed the exalarchist table stewards to do their work during the festival week. He said that as they received no remuneration, they only intend to benefit him, which concerns us not. Our rabbis taught contracts may be made during the festival week for work to be executed after the festival week, but to do it during the festival week is forbidden. The general principle on this point is that whatever one may do himself, he may tell a non-Jew to do, and what he himself may not do, he may not tell a non-Jew to do. Another very the taught contracts may be made during the festival week to be executed after the festival week, only that one should not measure weight or count quantities after the manner in which this is done on an ordinary day. Our rabbis taught one may not bring a sire to make during the festival week. Similarly, a firstborn sire should not be used to make nor a votive beast that has become disqualified another bury the top they may not bring a sire to mate during the festival week our Judah says where an ass is hankering for the male they may bring her the jackass to mate lest she become chilled all other beasts are merely brought into the stalls our rabbis taught sheep may not be turned out to graze in a hurdled enclosure on sabbath festivals or in the festival week but if they
The process as the loss on oil is considerable, whereas in the case of wine where the loss is not much, one might presume that he concurred with the stricter view of Arjuna. And if Patana had told us the latter clause alone, we might have argued that only in this case of wine did Arjuna say he may not do more, whereas in that former case of oil, one might presume that he concurred with the more lenient view of Arjuna. Therefore, it was necessary to enunciate both clauses. Said R. Isaac B. Abba, who is the Tana who requires that work if done should be done with a difference during the festival week where loss is threatened. It is not our Jose. Our Joseph said the Halachah is according to our Jose. Some scholars asked of our Naman B. Isaac, is it permitted to coat a meat cask with resin in the festival week? Said he to them. Sign I stated that the Halachah is according to our Jose. Supposing that our Jose said one may in the case of wine, does it follow that he said that one may? Also in the case of meat and tea for what is the reason that he allows in the case of wine it is because the loss on it is considerable it is also considerable in the case of meat as Abbe said Mater told me better a coated cask of six seahs than an uncoated cask of eight seahs are have a bigger exciting rap said the halachah appertaining to the festival week are like the halachah regulating the dealings with Cathites what is the legal import of this dictum said our Daniel son of R. Kenan it is to say that they are sterile regulations and communicate not to each other as for instance Samuel said that they may coat a jug with pitch but may not coat a cask while Ardemi of Nihartia said that they may coat a cask with pitch but they may not coat a jug one master being solicitous to avert loss the other master being solicitous to avoid exertion during the festival week said Abbe we have it as tradition that the halachah appertaining to the festival week are like the halachah appertaining to the Sabbath Talmud, Masmod can be some acts involved no penalty though forbidden while other acts are allowed of Anishio Arhuna had his harvest reaped during the festival week whereupon Rabba put an objection to Arhuna from the following they may mill flour during the festival week for the requirements of the festival what is not required for the festival is forbidden a thing that is perishable in the festival week is permitted to be done a thing. That is not perishable in the festival week is forbidden when does this rule obtain in the case of something that is already severed from the soil but where the crop is still attached to the soil even if all of it perish it is forbidden but if he have not food to eat he may reap gather into sheep's thresh window clean and mill only that he shall not thresh with cows he replied that Beretha is but an individual opinion and is not generally accepted by us as it has been taught Rabban. Simeon B. Gamaliel stated a general rule in the name of our Jose whatever is already severed from the soil even though only part of it might perish yet may it be worked while that which is still attached to the soil even though it might all perish is forbidden but if as you say that anonymous Beretha be our Jose's opinion then he should also be allowed to thresh with cows for surely our Isaac B. Abba said who is the tenor that demands some variation in the working during the festival week. Where loss is involved it is not our Jose said Arhunahi or Jose might reply yeah, indeed so yet as one does not usually thresh with cows threshing without them during the festival week would be no variation now our rabbis taught flour may be ground during the festival week for the needs of the festival but if not for the requirements of the festival week it is forbidden if however one ground and had some flour over he is allowed to use it trees may be cut down during the festival week. For the needs of the festival but if it is not for the needs of the festival it is forbidden if one however had cut down and had some over it is permitted the ingredients for brewing meat may be put in during the festival week for the needs of the festival but if it is not needed for the festival it is forbidden and if one put in the ingredients and had some brew left over it is permitted provided only that there is no guile contradiction was raised from the following they may put in ingredients for brewing meat during the festival week for the needs of the festival but what is not for the needs of the festival is forbidden be it a brew of dates or a brew of barley and even though one have some old brew he may act with guile and drink of the new there is a difference among tanames as was taught there should be no resort to guile in such matters our Jose son of Arjuna says one may act with guile sometimes Rab once had his harvest gathered for him in the festival Week Samuel heard of it and was annoyed might one suggest that Samuel concurred with the view of the individual authority no it was a crop of wheat which if left a while would not have deteriorated what is the reason that Rab acted thus he had not then enough to eat and as for Samuel he had not been fully informed of the circumstances or maybe he thought that the case of a prominent person is different Arjuna the prince once went out on the Sabbath wearing an amethyst signet and once drank water which an Aramean non-Jewish cook had heated RMI hearing of it was annoyed said R. Joseph what is the reason he was annoyed was it on account of the amethyst signet why it is taught chains earrings and rings are like all articles of dress that may be worn in the courtyard again if because he drank water which an Aramean had made hot why Samuel B. Isaac citing Rab stated that whatever can be eaten raw is not debarred as in the category of even cooked food it Case of a prominent person is different. Our Hanil citing Rab said that one may lop off branches from a palm tree during the festival week, even though he needs only the chips. Abbe denounced this dictum vehemently. Our Ashi had a wood in Shelania. He went to cut it down during the festival week. Said Our Sheila of Shelania to Our Ashi, what is your ground for acting thus? Is it because of what Our Hanil citing Rab said that one may lop branches from a palm during the festival week, even though he needs only the chips? But surely Abbe denounced it vehemently. Said he or Ashi to him, I heard it not as much as to say I do not concur with Abbe's view. The hatchet then slipped, threatening to cut off his leg. He then abandoned his task and came again. Rab Judah permitted pulling up flax, picking hops, and pulling up sesame crops. Said Abbe to Our Joseph, it is quite correct to do this in the case of flax, as it may be used for covering fruits. In the case of hops, as they may be used for brewing. Beer but sesame to what immediate use can it be put it may be picked on account of the seeds it contains Arjane had an orchard that had become ripe for picking during the festival week and he picked it the year after all the people kept their orchards waiting for the festival week Arjane thereupon renounced his proprietary rights in the orchard that year Mishnah a man may bring his fruits indoors for fear of thieves and pull his flax out of writing to prevent it spoiling. Provided he does not purposely hold the work over till the festival week and all those who have deliberately had their work held over for the festival week shall have it destroyed tomorrow bring indoors a tanned taught provided only that he bring them into his house privily Our Joseph had some beams of timber which he brought in during daylight said Abbe but it is taught provided only that he bring them into his house privily he replied the requisite privacy for these is attained best. During daylight since at night more men would be needed and torchbearers who would be required making much ado and pulls his flax out of reading. Our Jeremiah asked of our Zara if a man keeps work over for the festival week and dies should his children be penalized after him should you cite the case of Talmud, Masmod Kitten the one who had craftily clipped the ear of his firstborn beast and whose son is penalized after him I can reply that that is because that is an offense against a scriptural prohibition or should you cite the case of one who sold his non-Jewish slave to a non-Jew and whose son was penalized after him I can say that that is because he departed him daily from the performance of religious duties here what do we say that the rabbi's intention was to penalize the man personally and he is no more or maybe that it was only to impose a pecuniary penalty on his estate and that is to be had our Zara replied you learned it in the mission of field that has been cleared of thorns during the seventh year may be sowed in the post sabbatical year if it had been well improved or manured by hurdling cattle on it, it may not be sowed in the post sabbatical year and on this point our Jose Bihanna said we have it on tradition that if one had well improved his field and died his son may sow it this shows that our rabbis did intend to penalize him but his son the rabbis did not intend to penalize here too that it is the man himself that they would penalize but his son the rabbis would not have penalized said Abbe we have it on tradition that if a man has defiled his fellows clean produce and dies they do not penalize his son after him to pay for the damage caused what is the reason imperceptible damage is not in the category of legal damage the man himself the rabbis would have penalized but his son the rabbis would not have penalized mission houses stone slaves and cattle may not be brought save for the needs of the festival or the need of a vendor who has not enough to eat. Tomorrow, Rabba asked of Arnaman what about affording earning jobs in aid of one who has not enough to eat. He replied, We learned, or the need of a vendor who has not enough to eat. What is this relative clause who has not enough to eat intended to cover? Is it not to include such casual
The festival week are based on the avoidance of exertion and where loss is threatened the rabbis have allowed exertion whereas the regulations governing the 14th of Nisan are based on the exigencies of the festival anything which is required for the festival our rabbis have permitted and anything that is not required for the festival our rabbis have not permitted Mishnah one may not remove effects from house to house but one may remove them to his court whereas may not be brought home from the house of the craftsman if one is anxious about the things he may remove them to another court tomorrow but one may remove them to his court but you said at first that one's effects may not be removed at all said Abay the latter part comes to tell us that to another house in that same court he may remove his effects and wheres may not be brought home from the house of the craftsman said our Papa Rabba once gave us a test we learned wheres may not be brought home from it. House of the craftsman and as he contrasted with the following wares may be conveyed to and brought home from the house of the craftsman even though they be not needed for the festival and we reply to him the latter very refers to the 14th of Nisan while here it refers to the festival week or if you like I might suggest that both passages refer to the festival week but that the ruling here obtains where he trusts him and the latter ruling obtains where he does not trust him Talmud, Mosmod can be and in fact it is taught us wares may be brought home from the house of the craftsman for instance jugs from the jug makers and tumblers from the glass makers but not wool from the dyers nor articles from the house of the craftsman but if he has not enough to eat one gives him his pay in advance and leaves the object with him if however he does not trust him he leaves it in a house near him and if he is anxious about the things lest they be Stolen he brings them home privily you have thus explained the discrepancy about bringing home but the discrepancy about conveying still remains a difficulty for when it states wares may not be brought home it follows much less may one convey wares to the house of the craftsman hence obviously the explanation given at first is the correct one mission fix while drying may be covered with straw or Judah says they may even be piled up in heaps vendors of fruits clothing and other wares may sell privily for the requirements of the festival week fishermen grows founders and grist grinders ply their trade privily for the requirements of the festival week our Jose says they have imposed a restriction on themselves tomorrow our high Abba and RC differ in their interpretation both in the name of Hezekiah and our Yohan and one says that the former expression they may be covered mehapin means covering but lightly and the latter may even be piled up meabin means Spreading the straw closely, the other says that may be covered means spreading the straw lightly or densely, while the latter expression may even be piled up means myoking a sort of pile. It is also taught us may be piled up me and making a sort of pile. These are the words of our Judah vendors of fruits, clothing, and other wares may sell privily. The question was asked, does they have imposed a restriction on themselves mean that they do not work at all, or perhaps that they do it privily? Come and hear vendors of fruits, clothing, and other wares sell privily for the requirements of the festival week. Our Jose says the Tiberian traders have imposed a restriction on themselves not to sell at all. Here, stockers, fellers, and fishermen catch privily for the requirements of the festival week. Jose says the catchers of acre have imposed a restriction on themselves not to catch at all. Groats, founders, make hilk, a coarse meal, tragus, pulse, forage, and tis, and a pearl barley privily. For the requirements of the festival week, our Jose says the grist founders of Sephoris have imposed a restriction on themselves not to pound at all. Abbe explained Hilka means groats of one grain broken in two tracks, one into three, and one into four. When our Dimi came from Palestine, he said all these are compass spelled and objection was raised. Hilka tracks and are considered as tainted everywhere. Now this harmonizes well with the explanation that it is one grain broken into three or four. They are considered tainted everywhere because they have been rendered fit liable to take the taint of impurity. But according to the explanation that they are all spelled, why then are they taken as tainted everywhere? For these have not necessarily been rendered fit by damping. Sometimes they are, for instance, where the groats are made of peeled spelt because unless the grain had been soaked in water, it would not peel. And why is it called Hilka because it has had its Tunic has taken off an objection was raised one who vowed to abstain from Dagon is debarred even from partaking of the Egyptian being one dry but is allowed to eat it when fresh green and he is permitted rice hilti tragus and now this harmonizes well with the explanation that these varieties are so called because one grain is broken into two three or four it is proper to allow him to eat because these being now meal no longer belong to the category of Dagon grain but according to him who says that Hilka is what we call spelled it is still properly designated as Dagon this is a difficulty are who not permitted vendors of pot herbs to go and sell in the festival week in the marketplace in the ordinary way our Kahana thereupon put an objection to him from the following a shop which opens into a colonnade may be opened and closed in the ordinary way if it opens into the public domain the shopkeeper may open one door and close one and on the day preceding it. Last day of the Feast of Tabernacles he may bring out fruit and decorate the markets all round the town in honor of the last day of the feast that is to say in honor of the last day of the feast he may open but if not in honor of the last day of the feast he may not open that is not difficult to explain this latter prohibition refers to the sale of fruits whereas in the former case it is the sale of seasoning pot herbs that is allowed chapter 3 Mishnah and these may crop. They're here during the festival week one arriving home from abroad or from a place of captivity or one coming out of prison or one under a ban to whom the sages have just granted absolution and likewise one who applied to a sage and was absolved by him and a Nazi right or a leper on emerging from his state of ritual impurity to begin his purification and these may wash their garments during the festival week one arriving home from abroad or from the place of his captivity or Coming out of prison Talmud, Mosmod Kitten or one under a ban to whom the sages have just granted absolution and likewise one who applied to a sage and was absolved by him hand towels, barbers towels and bath towels may be washed men or women affected with the flux or menstruants or women after childbirth and all those emerging from a state of ritual impurity to begin their purification are allowed to wash their garments but all other men are forbidden Gemara what is the reason that all other men are forbidden as we learned members of the ward on duty and communal deputies at their posts are forbidden during their turn to crop their hair or wash their garments but on Thursday they are allowed in honor of the Sabbath now Rabbi Barhan reporting our Eliezer as commenting on this said what is the reason they may on Thursday so that they should not enter on the duty of their ward in a state of untidiness here also the reason is that they do not Enter upon the festival in a state of untidiness. Arzara inquired, Suppose one had lost something on the day before the festival. Do we say since he was prevented from attending to himself before he may, or perhaps as the reason is not obvious, he may not set Abbe, obviously not as people would then say so. All Syrian fancy loaves are forbidden, but the Syrian fancy loaves of Boethus are allowed. But admitting your argument against yet, what about it? A C statement who citing are you had said anybody who has but one tunic is allowed to wash it during the festival week. Would not people say in that case too? So all Syrian fancy loaves are forbidden, but the Syrian fancy loaves of Boethus are allowed. Surely it has been stated in this connection, said Marson of Arashi. His girdle proves his plight. Arashi's comments on our mission were in this form. Arzara inquired, What if a craftsman had lost something on the day before the festival? Do we say that since he is a craftsman? It Reason why he is allowed is obvious, or since the reason is not so obvious as in those other cases mentioned in the Mishnah, he may not attend to himself in the festival week. Let this question stand adjourned. One arriving home from abroad may crop the anonymous view of our Mishnah is not that of our Judah, for it is taught our Judah says one arriving home from abroad may not crop himself during the festival week because he had set out on his voyage without the approval of it. Rabbi said, Rabbi, if he merely went on a tour, all authorities are agreed that he is forbidden if to seek his bread. All are agreed that he is allowed. Difference of opinion arises only in the case of a voyage for business profits. One master looking upon it as equivalent to mere traveling, and the other master looking upon it as equivalent to seeking his bread. An objection was raised, said Rabbi, our Judah's opinion seems opposite where he had set out without approval, and the sage's opinion seems. Apposite where he had set out with approval now what is without approval if I say for going on a tour did you not say that all are agreed that he is forbidden again should it mean for seeking his bread surely did you not say that if with this object all are agreed that he is allowed it is obvious therefore that it means for profit seeking now consider the latter clause and the sage's opinion seems apposite where he had set
Weak is likewise forbidden to crop his hair during the thirty days of his morning Talmud. Masmod can be now if you say that there is a difference here in the case of the infant you are this implying that the observance of morning obtains in the case of a minor whereas it is taught a minor's garment is rent out of grief of soul or as she said that the negative inference is faulty for does it actually state but those who are forbidden perhaps it means to state that some there are who are forbidden and some others who are permitted Amimar or some say Arshish's son of R.E.D. Tata Samuel said an infant may be cropped in the festival week it makes no difference whether he was born during the festival week or was born before said Arfinius we learned this also indirectly from the following every one of those mentioned by the sages as being permitted to crop during the festival week may likewise crop his hair during the thirty days of his morning which means conversely but every one of those who is forbidden to crop during the festival week is likewise forbidden to crop during the thirty days of his morning now if you say that a newly born infant is forbidden to be cropped you find yourself implying that the observance of morning obtains in the case of a minor whereas it is taught distinctly the garment of a minor is rent merely out of grief of soul said Arashi that negative inference is faulty for does it actually State, but he who is forbidden in the festival week is also forbidden during his thirty days of mourning. Probably it means that some there are who are forbidden, and some others who are permitted. A mourner does not deport himself as one in mourning during a festival, as it is said, and thou shalt rejoice in the feast. For if his mourning began before the festival, a positive precept incumbent on the community overrides one incumbent on him as an individual. And if his mourning began just then, during the festival, an individual's function cannot come and put off that of the public. Now, what about one separated under a ban? Should he deport himself as one in separation during a festival? Said our Joseph, come and hear the courts deal with capital offenses, with offenses involving judicial floggings and monetary suits during the festival week. This implies that if one heeds not the court's decision, we put him under a ban. Now, if you presume that he should not deport himself. During the festival, like one under separation, and seeing that where one is already fallen under a ban, the festival comes and suspends the ban. Shall we pronounce him banned in the first instance during the festival? Abbe replied, Perhaps the object of the adjudication is to examine the charge against him. For should you not say thus, then capital offenses therein mentioned would likewise mean indeed that they would have him slain, but surely thereby the judges themselves would be. Depart from rejoicing in the feast as is scripturally ordained, as it is taught, says Arakiba. Once may it be shown that a Sanhedrin court that put a sinning soul to death do not taste food all that day from the instructive text, ye shall not eat on the blood. Therefore, I say it must be only to examine the charge against him, and likewise here it is only to examine the charge against him, said our Joseph to him. If you explain it so, the result is that you delay the execution of his. Sentence which is forbidden, but I take it they come early in the morning and examine the charges against him, and they go home and eat and drink all that day, and coming back with the setting sun, they do give a final decision and also have him put to death. Said Abbe, come and here, or one under a ban to whom the sages have granted absolution. Said Rabbi, does it state whom the sages granted absolution? It says, or one under a ban to whom the sages have just granted absolution. That is where he, the offender, went and appeased the plaintiff, and then came before our rabbis, and they then set him free from restraints. What about a leprous person? Does he deport himself as a leper during the festival? Said Abbe, come and here, and also a nazir or leper emerging from his state of impurity to begin his purification may crop his hair and wash his garments, which implies that during the days of his impurity he does deport himself as a leper. No, the Tana considered that this goes. Without saying and is to be understood thus it goes without saying that he does not deport himself as a leper during the festival but when he is emerging into his state of cleanness we might be inclined to restrict him in case he might defer making his preliminary offerings of purification therefore he informs us that he may nevertheless said Rabbah come and here it is taught and the leper in whom the plague is his clothes shall be rent and the hair of his head shall be loose. That is meant to include a high priest in this rule now we learn the high priest all through the year is on a PAR with any other person on a festival as we learn the high priest may make sacrifice on the altar even when he be one and without however eating thereof from this latter restriction of even a high priest you can infer about the former that he should deport himself as a leper during the festival infer that a mourner is forbidden to cut his hair because since the divine law. Ordain the sons of Aaron, let not the hair of your heads go loose. We infer that for everybody else cutting the hair is forbidden. Talmud, Masmod, Kitten, what about those separated under a ban and segregated lepers in regard to cutting their hair during the festival? We come and hear those separated under a ban and segregated lepers are forbidden to cut their hair and wash their garments. If one separated under a ban died, the Beth in stone his coffin. Arjuna says not that they set up a heap of stones over him like the heap of a kin, but the Beth in sent commissioners and have a large stone placed on his coffin, which teaches you that if anyone is placed under a ban and dies in his separation, the Beth in stone his coffin, a mourner is obliged to muffle his head since the all merciful enjoined Ezekiel and cover not thine upper lip. We infer that everybody else is obliged to do so. What about one separated under a ban in regard to muffling the headset? Our Joseph come in here and they muffle themselves and sit as men separated under a ban and like mourners until heaven grants them mercy said Abbe perhaps it is different with one who is separated under a ban by displeasure of heaven as it were for that is more serious than being in disfavour with men what about a leper in regard to muffling the head come in here and he shall cover his upper lip we infer from this that he is obliged to muffle his head infer that a mourner is forbidden to put on tefillin since the all merciful ordained as bind thy head tire upon thee this implies that everybody else is forbidden to do so in deep mourning what about one separated under a ban in regard to tefillin it stands adjourned what about a leper in regard to putting on tefillin come in here holy writ prescribes and the leper this amplification is to include even a high priest in this law his clothes shall be broom that is they shall be torn and the Hair of his head shall be pruro means only letting the hair grow long. These are the words of our Eliza. Our Akiva explains otherwise shall be as stated in connection with the leper's head and shall be as stated in connection with the leper's garment. Therefore, just as shall be stated in connection with the garment refers to something external to the body clothes, so also shall be stated in connection with the head refers to something external to the body. What then is to be discarded? Is it not the reference to Tefillin said our Papa? Not necessarily these it may refer to not putting on a cap or sedarium. A mourner is forbidden to give the usual greeting of well-being because the all merciful said to Ezekiel sigh in silence. What about one separated under a ban in regard to abstaining from the usual greeting? Our Joseph said, Come and here and in regard to greeting one another with peace as man to man they that are fasting behave like persons who are separated under a Banned by the omnipresent said Abbe to him perhaps the case of the separated as under a ban by displeasure of heaven is different because it is more serious what about a leper in regard to abstaining from greeting one with peace come and here it is written and he shall cover his upper lip that is his lips shall be compressed together that he should behave like one separated under a ban and like a mourner and he is forbidden to greet one with peace and for that then why not solve now the above question about one separated under a ban said Arahabi Phineas in the name of our Joseph does it actually state that he the leper is forbidden to greet one with peace like one separated it only states that he behaves like one separated or like a mourner with reference to other things and at the same time that he is also forbidden to greet one with peace a mourner is forbidden to engage in the words of the Torah because the all merciful said to Ezekiel sigh in silence what about one separated under a ban engaging in the words of the Torah said our Joseph come and here one separated under a ban may teach others and others may teach him he may be hired for work and others may be hired by him one under anathema neither teaches others nor do others recite it to him he is not hired for work nor are others to be hired by him but he recites to himself in order that he does not interrupt his study and he makes a small stall for himself as a means for his livelihood whereat Rab remarked as for instance selling water at the Passover both infer from that what about a leper engaging in the words of the Torah come and here it is written and make them known unto thy children and thy children's children the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb that they may learn to fear me all the days and that they may teach their children that is just as they heard God's word and at Sinai with all fear trepidation and Perspiration so be it now studied with all fear trepidation and perspiration hence sad they the
Set the likeness of my image on them and through their sins have I upset it. Let your couches be overturned on account thereof. What about one separated under a ban and a leper overturning couches? Let the stand adjourn. The mourner is forbidden to engage in work for it is written and I shall turn your feast into mourning. Hence we say that just as it is forbidden to engage in work during a feast festival, so is it forbidden to engage in work during mourning. What about one separated? Under a ban in regard to doing work said our Joseph come and here when the sages said that it is forbidden them to engage in work about themselves bathed on shoes they laid this down only for the daytime but at night it is all permitted and the same restrictions you find also in the case of one separated and a mourner does not this refer to all those restrictions no it is only to the other things but not to work come and here one separated under a ban teaches others and others teach him he is hired for work and others are hired by him you may infer from that what about a leper engaging in work let the stand adjourn the mourner is forbidden to wash himself as it is written and anoint not thyself with oil and bathing is implied in anointing what about one separated under a ban bathing said our Joseph come and here when the sages said that it is forbidden and to wash on the fast day they meant only in regard to washing the whole body but one is Permitted to wash one's face, hands, or feet, and the same restrictions you find also in the case of one separated under a ban and a mourner. Now does not this refer to all the restrictions? No, only to the others, but not to bathing. What about the leper washing himself? Let the stand adjourn. The mourner is forbidden to put on sandal shoes, as the all-merciful ordained Ezekiel, and put thy shoes upon thy feet, which implies that for everyone else it is forbidden to do so. What about one separated under a ban putting on sandals? Said our Joseph, come and here when the sages said that it is forbidden then on the fast day to put on sandals. They meant only in town, but on the road it is permitted. When, for instance, when one sets out on the road, he puts on shoes on entering town, he takes them off, and the same you find also in the case of one separated under a ban. Now does not this refer to all those restrictions? No, only to the other. What about the leper putting on? Sandals let the stand adjourn the mourner is forbidden the use of the conjugal bed as it is written and David comforted Bathsheba his wife and went in unto her which implies that before then it was forbidden him what about one separated under a ban in regard to the use of the conjugal bed said our Joseph come and here all those years that Israel spent in the wilderness they were separated under a ban yet they used their conjugal bed said Abbe but maybe the case of those who are separated by displeasure of heaven is different because it is less serious you say less serious but you argued before that it was more serious he is uncertain on the point if you go and argue this way he rebuts it and if you go and argue the other way he again rebuts it what about a leper in regard to the use of the conjugal bed come and here for it is taught it is written but he shall dwell outside his tent seven days that is he shall be like one separated under a Ban and like a mourner and he is forbidden the use of the conjugal bed as outside his tent means only apart from his wife as it is said go say to them return yet to your tents you may infer it from that then could not one now by this conclusion solve the above question on this point about one separated under a ban said Arhuna son of Phineas in our Joseph's name does it state categorically that he the leper is forbidden like one separated it only states that he is like one separated under a ban and like a mourner in respect of other things and that he be also forbidden the use of the conjugal bed a mourner does not send his sacrifices to the temple for it is taught says our Simeon it is written and thou shalt sacrifice peace offerings and eat there and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God that is one offers peace offerings only at times when one is untroubled but not at a time when one is one and what about one separated under a ban should he then Sent his offering, said our Joseph, come and hear all those years that Israel spent in the wilderness, they were separated under a ban, and yet they sent their offerings to the tabernacle, said Abbe to him, but perhaps one separated by the displeasure of heaven is different because it is not so serious. You say not so serious, but you argued before that it was more serious, Abbe being uncertain on the point, rebutted it either way. What about a leper? May he send his sacrificial offerings, come and hear, and after he had defied priest is cleansed, that is cleansed, after coming away from his dead near of kin, they shall reckon unto him seven days, those are the seven days which he has to count, and in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, into the inner court to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, Talmud, Masmod Kitten, which is his own meal oblation, consisting of one tenth part of an ephah of fine flour, these are the words of our Judah. Our Simeon says the wording and in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary into the inner court to minister in the sanctuary he shall offer his sign offering implies that only when he is fit to go into the sanctuary he is fit to offer up his own oblation and when he is not fit to go into the sanctuary he is not fit to offer up his own oblation. Rabbah said whence do we know the regulation that we send a messenger of the court from what is written and Moses sent to call David and Abiram. The sons of Eliab and whence do we know that we summon him to attend in person from what is written and Moses said to Korah be thou and all thy congregation before the Lord thou and Aaron tomorrow whence to appear before a great personage from what is written before the Lord to name both parties thou and so and so from what is written thou and they that are with thee and Aaron that we fix a time as it is written tomorrow time and again as it is written they call their Pharaoh. The king of Egypt, the author of commotion, he hath let the appointed time pass by as I live, saith the king, the Lord of hosts, surely like Tabor among the mountains and like Carmel by the sea, so shall he come. And whence do we know that if one behaves insolently towards the court's messenger and the latter comes and reports it, this is not deemed slander on his part, as it is written, and Moses sent to call David and Abiram the sons of Eliab, and they said, We will not come up, wilt thou? Put out the eyes of these men, we will not come up. Whence do we derive that we may pronounce a sham of the imprecation from the text, Curse Yamiraz? Whence do we derive that it must be according to the considered opinion of some prominent person from the text, Curse Yamiraz? Said the angel of the Lord to Barak, and whence do we derive that we pronounce the her in front the same text, Curse Cursing, whence do we derive that it falls on one who eats and drinks with the offender, or Stands within four cubits of him from the same text, curse yet cursing the inhabitants thereof. Whence do we derive that we publish the details of his offense from the same text? Because they, the denizens of Meraz came not to the help of the Lord and said, Will Abarak pronounce the Shemitah against Meraz with the blast of four hundred horns? Some say that Meraz was the name of a great personage, others say that it was the name of a star, as it is written there, they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Tisira. Whence do we derive that his property may be forfeited from the text? And whosoever come not within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of the captivity. Whence do we derive that we may quarrel with an offender, curse him, smite him, pluck his hair, and put on him an oath from the text? And I contended with them and cursed them and smote. Certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God whence do we derive that we may fetter arrest and prosecute them from the text let judgment be executed upon him with all diligence whether it be unto death or to uprooting or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment what is meant by uprooting said our Adamari reporting Nehemiah B. Barak who said in the name of our high B. Abin who had it from Rab Judah it mean the Hardafa what is denoted by Hardafa said Rab Judah. Son of our Samuel B. Shalath in the name of Rab it means they declare him separated forthwith then if he still persists they repeat the same declaration after thirty days and finally they pronounce the Haram on him after sixty days said Arhuna Behina this is what Arhista said they first warn him on Monday then on the Thursday following and again on the Monday this rule applies if he disregards a monetary judgment but in a case of sheer contumacy the ban is imposed forthwith when a Certain butcher had been insolent to our Tobabi Matina Abbe and Rabba were appointed to investigate and they pronounced the Shamatha on him in the end the fellow went and appeased his litigant said Abbe what is one to do should we absolve him now the Shamatha had not lasted its thirty days shall we not absolve him the rabbis want to go into him said Lai to our EDB Abin have you perchance heard out bearing on this he replied thus said our Talafabi Abami is reporting Samuel A. Tutbines. And a two releases said Abbe to him yet but this obtains only in the case of disregarding a monetary decision but in a case of contumacy it holds until it has rested on him for thirty days anyhow that shows that Abbe was of opinion that if three people had pronounced the Shamatha on a man three others cannot come and release him for the
Direct proof on that point there is an indirect indication of it if her father had but spit in her face should she not hide in shame seven days let her be shut up without the camp seven days and after that he shall be brought in again our historical remarked our separation in Babylon corresponds to their reproof in Palestine but is their reproof of only seven days duration not more is it not a fact that our Simeon Rabbi son and Barkapur were once sitting rehearsing the lesson together. When a difficulty arose about a certain passage and our Simeon said to Barkapur this matter needs Rabbi to explain it and Barkapur replied and what for can Rabbi have to say on this he went and repeated it to his father at which the latter was vexed and when Barkapur next presented himself before Rabbi he said Barkapur I have never known you he realized that he Rabbi had taken the matter to heart and submitted himself to the disability of a reproof for thirty days. Again on one occasion Rabbi issued an order that they should not teach disciples in the open public marketplace what was his exposition how beautiful are thy steps in sandals O prince's daughter the roundings of thy thighs are like the links of a chain the work of the hands of a skilled workman as the thigh is covered Talmud, Masmod can be so the discussions on the words of the Torah are also to be undercover Arhai went out and taught the sons of his two brothers in the open. Marketplace Rabbi and Rabbi son of Karhan Rabbi heard of this and was vexed when Arhai next presented himself before him Rabbi said to him he who is calling you outside he realized that he Rabbi had taken the matter to heart and submit himself to the disability of a reproof for thirty days on the thirtieth day Rabbi sent him a message saying come later he sent him a message not to come what was his idea in sending the first message and what in sending the second at first he Thought part of the day may be deemed equivalent to the whole day and in the end he thought we do not say part of the day may be deemed equivalent to the whole day in the end he came said Rabbi to him why have you come our high replied because you sir sent for me to come but then I sent to you not to come he replied the one messenger I saw and the other I have not seen thereupon he Rabbi cited as appropriate the text when a man's ways please the Lord he make even his enemies to be at peace with him wherefore sir asked Rabbi did you act thus contrary to order because replied our high it is written wisdom crieth aloud at the street she utter with her voice in the broad places she calleth at the head of the street at the entrance of the gates in the city she utter with her words said Rabbi to him if you read holy writ once you have not read it a second time if you have read it a second time you have not reacted a third time and if you have read it a third time they who Taught you have not explained it to you. The text wisdom cry aloud in the streets is to be taken in the sense in which Rabbi explained it. For Rabbi said, if one studies the Torah, endures the Torah, proclaims his merit abroad. But then is it not written otherwise? From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret that has special reference to the Kaladays and what used as our high make of the text. The roundings of thy thighs. He explained it in reference to the dispensing of charity and acts of loving kindness. Thus, you see the disability of their reproof in Palestine lasts thirty days. The reproof of an is different, and our reproof how long is its disability? One day only, as in the case of Samuel and Marakba, when they were sitting together at the college, engaging in the revision of something. Marakba sat before him at a distance of four cubits, and when they sat together at a judicial session, Samuel sat before him at a distance of four cubits, and the place was. Dug out for Marakba where he sat on a matting so that what he said should be heard every day Maryub accompanied Samuel to his house. One day he was rather engrossed in a suit and Samuel walked behind him when he had reached his house. Samuel said to him, Haven't you been rather a long time at it? Take up now my case. He then realized that he Samuel felt aggrieved and submitted himself to the disability of a reproof. For one day there was a certain woman who sat sprawling on the footway, fanning the husks out of her barley groats, and when a collegian was walking past her, she did not make way for him. He said, How impudent is this woman? She came before Arnam and said he to her, Did you hear him utter the Shemath? She replied, She had not said he to her, Go and submit yourself to the disability of a reproof. For one day Zutra Tobia was once expounding a scriptural lesson in the presence of Rab Judah coming to the verse, and these are the last words of David, he said to our Judah. Last words this implies that there were former words which are those former words he Rab Judah kept silent without saying anything again said the former last words this implies there were former words which are those former words he then replied well thank you that one who does not know an explanation of that text is not an eminent man he's to realize that he Rab Judah had taken the matter to heart and submitted himself to the disability of a reproof for one day now however that we have come upon this question last words this implies that there were former words what were they these and David spoke unto the Lord the words of the song in the day that the Lord delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul the Holy One blessed be he said to David David do you compose a song on the downfall of Saul had you been Saul and he David I would have annihilated many a David out of regard for him hence it is written Shigan of David which he said unto the Lord concerning Cush of Benjamin, was Cush that Benjamite's name and was not his name Saul, but just as a Cushite Ethiopian is distinguishable by his skin, so was Saul distinguished by his deeds. In like manner, you explain, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman that he had taken to wife. Was she a Cushite woman? Was not her name Zipporah, but as a Cushite woman is distinguishable by her skin, so was also Zipporah distinguished by her deeds. In like manner, you explain now, even like the Cushite heard now was his name Cushite, was not his name Zedekiah, but as a Cushite is distinguishable by his skin, so was Zedekiah distinguished by his deeds. In like manner, you explain, are ye not as the children of the Cushites unto me, O children of Israel? Saith the Lord, now is their name children of Cushites, was not their name children of Israel. The truth is that as a Cushite is distinguishable by his skin, so are Israel distinguished by their ways. From all other nations are Samuel bin Amani citing our Jonathan explained and these tire the last words of David the saying of David the son of Jesse and the saying of the man raised on high means it is the saying of David the son of Jesse who established firmly the discipline of repentance the spirit of the Lord spoke by the end his word was upon New York tongue the God of Israel said the rock of Israel spoke to me ruler over man shall be the righteous even he that ruleth through the reverent fear of God what does this mean said Arabah what means this the God of Israel said to the David spake the rock of Israel I rule man who rules me it is the righteous for I make a decree and he may annul it and these tire the names of the mighty of David Joshua base he the etc what does this mean said Arabah what means and these are the mighty deeds of David Joshua base he which means sitting at the session that is when David sat at the college session he was not seated on cushions and coverlets but on the bare ground for all the time that his master Iari the Jerite was alive he taught the rabbis whilst being himself seated on cushions and coverlets when his soul found rest David used to teach the rabbis being himself seated on the ground said they the rabbis to him sit sit on the cushions and coverlets but he would not accede to their request Tashem and I rab explained the holy one blessed be he said to him to David since you have humbled yourself you shall be like me that is that I make a decree and you may annul a chief of the captains that is you be chief next to the three fathers he is Adno the Esnite that is when he was sitting engaged in the study of Torah he rendered himself blind as a worm but when he went marching out to wage war he hardened himself like a lance on eight hundred slain at one time that is when he threw a javelin he felt eight hundred slain at one time and moaned for the shortage of Two hundred for it is written how one should chase a thousand, but an echo came forth and said, Save only for the matter of Uriah the Hittite said our Tanhuni son of Arhai, a man of far echo as citing our Jacob Biaha who reported our Simlay, and some say our Tanhun said as reporting Arhuna, and again some say Arhuna alone said that Talmud, Masmod Kitan, if a disciple separates someone in defense of his personal dignity, a separation is ineffective for it is taught one who has been separated. As under a band by the master is deemed separated from the disciple, but one who has been separated by the disciple is not deemed separated from the master, that means not separated from the master, but in regard to everybody else he is separated. Now let us see separated for what offense if it was imposed for some offense towards heaven, and there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord, therefore presumably it is only so where a disciple had pronounced. It in defense of his personal dignity, our Joseph said that a collegiate may enforce his own rights in a matter where he is perfectly certain as to the law. There was once a certain collegiate whose reputation was objectionable. Said Rab Judah, How is one to act to
standing of Rabjuda who could absolve you but go to Arjuna Nisiya that he may absolve you he went and presented himself to him said he to RMI go forth and look into his case if it be necessary to absolve him absolve him RMI looked into his case and had a mind to absolve him then our Samuel Binaman he got upon his feet and said why even a separation imposed by one of the domestics in Rabbi's house was not lightly treated by the Rabbis for three years how much more so one imposed by our colleague Rabjuda said Arzara from the fact that this venerable scholar should just now have turned up at this college after not having come here for many years you must take it that it is not desirable to absolve that man here Arjuna Nisiya did not absolve him he went away weeping a wasp and came and stung him in the privy member and he died they brought him into the grotto of the pious but they admitted him not they brought him into the grotto of the judges and they received him why was he admitted there because he had acted according to the dictum of RILAI for RILAI says if one sees that his evil is gaining sway over him let him go away where he is not known let him put on sorted clothes don a sorted wrap and do the sorted deed that his heart desires rather than profane the name of heaven openly what was the incident of the domestic in Rabbi's house it was one of the maidservants in Rabbi's house that had noticed a man beating his grown up son and said let that fellow be under a shamatha because he sinned against the words of holy writ put not a stumbling block before the blind for it is taught and put not a stumbling block before the blind that text applies to one who beats his grown up son Reshlakish was once guarding an orchard when a fellow came and ate some figs he shouted at him but the fellow heeded him not whereupon he said let that fellow be under a shamatha he replied rather be that other fellow Reshlakish under a shamatha Though I have incurred a pecuniary liability towards you, did I incur a separation? Reshlakish went to the college and reported it. They said to him, His separation is a justified separation. Yours was not a justified separation, and what is the remedy for it? Go to him that he himself may absolve you, but I know him not. Said they to him, To Reshlakish, go to the Nasai that he absolve you, for it is taught if they separate him, and he knows not who he was that separated him. Let him go to the Nasai and let him absolve him from his separation. Said Arunai, one of the synods at Ashadi made a regulation that if the Ubethin committed an offense, he was not to be formally separated, but someone was to tell him, Save your dignity and remain at home should he again offend, they separate him, because otherwise there would be a profanation of the name of God, and this is at variance with Reshlakish, for Reshlakish said, If a scholar disciple has committed an Offensive deed they do not separate him publicly because it is said therefore shalt thou stumble in the day and the prophet also shall stumble with thee in the night that is to say keep it dark like night Marzitra the pious if ever a collegiate incurred the shamatha pronounced the shamatha first on himself and then pronounced it on the culprit as he entered his house he first absolved himself and then absolved the other said Argidal as citing rabbi scholar disciple may pronounce separation on himself and absolve himself said our papa may good befall me for I have never put the shamatha on any collegiate but then when a collegiate did incur the shamatha how did he act as they do in the west for in the west Palestine they appoint a tribunal for chastising a collegiate but do not appoint a tribunal for pronouncing a shamatha what is the etymology of the word shamatha said rabbit is shamatha death is there Samuel said it is shamatha you he shall be Desolation and its effects adhere to one like grease to the oven and this is in disagreement with what Reshlakish said for Reshlakish said that just as when it the Hurim enters it penetrates the 248 joints on one's body so on its withdrawal it departs from the 248 joints when it enters as it is written and the city shall be Hurim curse i.e. Hurim being in its letter value 248 so at its withdrawal as it is written. In wrath remember Rahem to have compassion the letter value being the same our Joseph said cast a shamatha on the dog's tail and it will do its work for there was a dog that used to eat the rabbi's shoes and they did not know what it was that did it so they pronounced the shamatha on the culprit and the dog's tail caught fire and got burnt there was a domineering fellow who bullied a certain collegiate the latter came before our Joseph for advice said he to him go and put the shamatha on him. I am afraid of him, he replied, said he to him, and go and take out a writ against him. I am all the more afraid to do that, said our Joseph to him, take that writ, put it into a jar Talmud, Moss mode could and be taken to a graveyard and do into it a thousand shipper horn blasts on forty days. He went and did so the jar burst and the domineering bully died. What is the significance of using a shipper that he'll pay the penalty? What signifies the tooting said our Isaac son of our Judah? Suggests the tumbling of high houses for it is taught Rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel said that wherever the sages set their eye against one, the result was either death or poverty and the Nazi right or leper emerging from his state of impurity to a state of purity. Our Jeremiah inquired of our Zero whether this concession was allowed only when they had not an earlier opportunity, or maybe even if they had an earlier opportunity, he replied, We learned it in a very all those who were. Mentioned in the Mishnah as being allowed to crop their hair during the festival week are allowed where they had no earlier opportunity but if they had an earlier opportunity and did not use it are forbidden the Nazi right and the leper however are allowed even if they had an opportunity and did not use it the reason being that they should not delay bringing their prescribed offerings on their release from their respective restrictions attended taught a priest and a mourner also are allowed to crop themselves now as to this mourner under what conditions may he do so shall I assume that the eighth day of his mourning fell on the day before the festival then he ought to have trimmed himself then on the day before the festival again if the eighth day of his mourning came on a Sabbath which was the day before the festival if so then he should have trimmed his hair on the Friday as are his dust stated citing Rabbin Abishila that the rule in practice followed Abbasals. View and that the sages concurred with Abbasal, namely that where the eighth day of his morning came on a Sabbath which was the day before a festival, in such a case he was allowed to trim himself on the Friday. No, the statement in the Beritha is required for the case where the seventh day of his morning came on a Sabbath which was also the day before the festival. In that case the external tanda takes the view of Abbasal who says that part of a day may be deemed as an entire day and accordingly the seventh day of his morning is counted both with the preceding and with the following period and as that happens to be a Sabbath day the mourner was prevented from trimming himself on the festival eve whereas our tanda takes the view of the sages who say that part of a day is not deemed as an entire day and accordingly the mourner has not yet completed the seven days of his morning before the festival now as to the priest under what conditions may he shall. I assume that the turn of his ward terminated on the day before the festival he should have trimmed himself then on the day before the festival no it is necessary to assume that the turn of his ward terminated on the festival day in that case our tana then holds in view of what we learned at three periods of the year all the wards have an equal right to assist in placing the ordained parts of the festival offerings on the altar and sharing the shoe bread that we consider him as one whose ward had virtually not yet completed its turn whereas the external tana holds that although in a way he belongs to the other wards also his own ward had nevertheless actually completed its turn and therefore he may trim himself our rabbis taught all those who were mentioned in the mission as being allowed to crop their hair during the festival week are likewise allowed to crop their hair during the days of their morning but surely it is taught that they are forbidden said our is citing our Sheila when it is taught here that they are allowed to crop their hair during the days of their mourning it refers only to persons who suffered one bereavement immediately after another if it refers only as you say to persons who suffered one bereavement immediately after another what is the point in wording it all those who were mentioned in the mission whereas under such unfortunate circumstances it is even applicable to anybody as it is taught if a person suffered one bereavement immediately after another and his hair has become oppressively long he may ease it with a razor and wash his raiment with water but that has already been explained our said it means ease it with a razor but not with scissors wash his raiment with water but not natron or lie furthermore said our his this very indicates that otherwise a mourner is barred from washing his clothes our rabbis taught just as it was said that cropping the hair during the festival Week is not allowed so is paring the nails during the festival week not allowed this is our Judah's opinion but our Jose allows it and just as it was said that a mourner is not allowed to crop his hair within the period of his mourning so is paring the nails not allowed to him within the period of his mourning this is our Judah's opinion but our Jose allows it Allah stated that the Halacha follows the view of our Judah in the case of a mourner and that of our Jose in regard to the festival week. Samuel said
was once standing before Aryul Hanan at the college during the festival week when Aryul Hanan bit off his nails and threw them away. Learn from this incident three points learned that it is allowed to take off nails during the festival week, that doing it with the teeth was not considered objectionable, and that nails may be thrown away, but this deduction is not correct, as surely it is taught three things were said in reference to nails one who buries them is righteous, one who burns them is pious, and one who throws them away is a villain. What is the reason lest a pregnant woman should step over them and miscarry, but then women do not often come to the college, and should you say that sometimes the nails are gathered and thrown away outside once they have been shifted, their spell has been lifted. Rab Judah is citing Rab said a pair of scholars came from Hamathan before Rabbi and Marzitra taught the same as a very a pair of scholars came from Hamathan before Rabbi. And asked him about paring the nails during morning, and he permitted it to them. And if they had asked him about trimming the upper lip, he would have permitted it to them likewise. And Samuel stated that they did ask him also about the upper lip, and that he permitted them. Abitol, the hairdresser, said in the name of Rab that trimming the upper lip means from corner to corner, and of the drooping ends to all that causes inconvenience. Said RMI, and as regards the upper lip, it also means only whatever part causes inconvenience. Said Arnam and B. Isaac, and to me all of it is like the end of the upper lip causing inconvenience. And Abitol, the hairdresser, citing Rab, said also this Pharaoh, the contemporary of Moses, was a puny fellow, a cubit in height, with a beard, a cubit long, and his chalk of hair, a cubit, and a span, justifying what is said. And he said, up over it, the kingdom of men, the lowest of men. And furthermore, said Abitol, the hairdresser, as citing Rab. Pharaoh the contemporary of Moses was a magus because it is said get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning lo he goeth out unto the water and these may wash their clothes during the festival week one arriving from abroad R.C.S. citing Aryul Hanan said that one who has but one tunic is allowed to wash it during the festival week thereupon R. Jeremiah put an objection to him and these may wash their clothes during the festival week one arriving from abroad etc. which enumeration implies that only those here mentioned may wash but one who has but one tunic may not set R. Jacob to R. Jeremiah be talify I will explain that to you our mission permits to wash even if he has two garments if they be soiled R. Isaac son of R. Jacob B.G. or sent a message in the name of Aryul Hanan that garments made of flax one may wash during the festival week robber raised an objection hand towels barbers wraps and bath towels may be washed Talmud, Moss mode couldn't be this detailed. Enumeration implies that these only one may wash, but not all sorts of garments made of flax set away to him. Not necessarily our mission included even those other kinds of material. Said Barhidai, I have myself seen at the lake of Tiberias people bringing along basins full of flax garments and washing them during the festival week. Abay, however, strongly contested this testimony. Who can vouch to us that they did it with the approval of the sages? Possibly they did so without the approval of the sages' mission. And the following documents may be indicted during the festival week: instruments of betrothal, bills of divorce, and receipts, testaments, bequests, and prosbols, valuation certificates, and orders for alimony records of Eliza and of repudiation of marriage, and arbitration records, judgment orders, and diplomatic correspondence. Gemara instruments of betrothal. Said Samuel, one is allowed to betroth a woman during the festival week. The reason being less than other. Rival suitor anticipate him might one suggest that the wording here lends support to Samuel's view and the following may be indicted during the festival week instruments of betrothal. What is meant by this is it not actually indicating the formula of Kiddushin? No, it means drawing up the preliminary terms and as Argidal citing Rab stated how much do you give to your son so much and so much how much do you give to your daughter so much and so much if they then stood up and pronounced the dedication is causal formula they have acquired their legal rights to the offers these are among the matters that are legally acquired by word of mouth might one suggest then the following is lending support to him to Samuel one may take a wife during the festival week whether a virgin or a widow but not effect a Levi rate marriage as it is a rejoicing for him the groom which implies that betrothing is allowed not quite so he stated the rule in the form not merely this is not allowed but even that not merely it is forbidden to betroth by which no scriptural obligation is carried out but even to take a wife in wedlock whereby a scriptural obligation is fulfilled he is forbidden come and hear a support for this for it was learned in the school of Samuel grooms may betroth but not bring a bride home and they may not make a feast of betrothal nor effect a Levi rate marriage as this is a rejoicing for him the groom and for this but yet could Samuel have said lest another rival suitor anticipate him surely Rab Judah as citing Samuel said forty days before the embryo is formed an echo issues forth on high announcing the daughter of so and so is to be a wife to so and so similarly such and such a field is to belong to so and so know what it means is lest another rival suitor anticipate him by means of prayer as is illustrated by what occurred to Rabbi who overheard a certain fellow praying for grace saying may that girl be destined to be mine said Robert to the man pray not for grace thus if she be me for you you will not lose her and if not you have challenged providence later he overheard him praying that either he should die before her or she before him said Robert to him praying Jack did I not tell you not to pray for grace in this matter thus said Rab in the name of our Reuben B. Estrobal from the Torah from the prophets and from the hagiographer it may be shown that a woman is destined to a man by God from the Torah. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said the thing proceedeth from the Lord from the prophets but his Samson's father and mother knew not that it was of the Lord and from the hagiographer house and riches are the inheritance of fathers but a prudent wife is from the Lord and Rab said also this in the name of our Reuben B. Estrobal a person does not incur suspicion unless he has done the thing suspected and if he has not done it wholly he has done it partly and if he has not done it partly he has a mind to do it, and if he has not had a mind to do it, he has seen others doing it and enjoyed the sight of it. As against this, our Jacob of Nihar Pekad raised an objection from the following text, and the children of Israel did impute things that were not right unto the Lord their God. There they did it purposely to provoke God. Come then and hear the statement. And Moses heard and fell on his face. What tidings had he heard? Said our Samuel be Namani as reporting our Jonathan. He heard that they suspected him of adultery with a married woman, as it is said, and they were jealous of Moses in the camp and of Aaron the Holy One of the Lord. And said our Samuel be Isaac. This indicates that everyone was jealous of his wife because of Moses. There again it was done out of hatred. Then come and hear the statement. Said our Jose may my share be with him whom they suspect of something of which he is innocent. Nay, further our Papa said they suspected me myself of something of which. I was innocent. It is not difficult to explain. One speaks of a rumor that dies away, the other of a rumor that persists. And how long would a persistent rumor be said? Abayna told me local gossip lasts a day and a half, and that holds good only if it did not cease in the meantime. But if it had ceased in the meantime, we take no notice of it. If, however, it does cease in the meantime, the rule is to disregard it only where it was not stopped out of fear. But if it was stopped out of fear, it is not to be disregarded again. The rule is to disregard it only where it does not break out again. But where it breaks out again, we do not disregard it. Also, the rule is to disregard it when he, the malign person, has no enemies. But if he has enemies, we say it is his enemies who have spread the adverse rumor. Mishnah bills of credit may not be written during the festival week. But if he, the creditor, does not trust him or he has not enough food to eat, he may write scrolls of. The law and the scriptural sections for phylacteries and mezuzoth may not be written during the festival week, nor may a single letter be corrected even in the ancient temple scroll. Our Judah says a person may write the scriptural sections for the phylacteries or mezuzoth for himself. Talmud, Mosmod, Kitanay, and may spin on his thigh the blue wool for his fringe. Gemara, our rabbis taught a person may write the scriptural sections for phylacteries or mezuzoth for his own use and spin on his thigh the blue threads for his own fringe and for others he may do so as a favor. This is our Meir Sbu. Our Judah says he may artfully dispose of his own and then write fresh ones for his own use. Our Jose says he may write and sell them in his usual way enough for his personal requirements. Rab gave a decision to our Hanil and some say Rab will be barhanded to our Hanil that the Halachah is that one may write and them in his way to the extent of his requirements and may spin on his. Thigh blue wool for his fringe. Our rabbis taught a person may spin on his thigh the blue thread for his fringe, but may not do so with a stone as a
are reckoned as a Sabbath day. Gemara, the restrictions fall away. Said Rav, this means only the restrictions fall away, but the days of mourning do not fall away. And so said also are who not the restrictions fall away, but the days do not fall away. And Arshis hate said that even the days also fall away. What is the meaning of but the days of mourning do not fall away? It means that if he had not cropped his hair on the day before the festival, he is forbidden to crop himself after the festival. Talmud, Masmod can be, and that is exactly what is taught in the Beritha. If one buries his dead three days before a festival, his restrictions of the seven fall away. If eight days before a festival, his restrictions of the thirty fall away, and he crops his hair on the day before the festival. If he had not cropped himself on the day before the festival, he is forbidden to crop himself after the festival. Abbasal says he is permitted to crop himself after the festival for just as the observed obligation of three days quashes the restriction of the seven, so does the observed obligation of seven quash the restrictions of thirty. You say the observed obligation of seven, but we learned in our mission eight days before the festival. Abbasal maintains the view that part of a day is reckoned as an entire day, and here the seventh day of mourning enters into the count both this way and that our Hisdai citing Rabbin, the son of Sheila said the Halacha follows the opinion. Of Abbasal and the sages concur with Abbasal that when his eighth day comes on a Sabbath, which is the day before a festival, he is permitted to crop himself even in the Friday, whose opinion is followed in the statement in which Aramurum citing Rab said as to the mourner, as soon as the comforters have risen to depart from his house, he is permitted to bathe, whose view is it, it is Abbasal's view, said Abbe the Halacha follows Abbasal's view in regard to the seventh day of mourning. And the sages concur with Abbasal in regard to the thirtieth day of mourning that we say part of the day is regarded as the whole day. Rab said the Halacha follows Abbasal's view in regard to the thirtieth day, but in regard to the seventh day, the Halacha does not follow the view of Abbasal and the Nihardians say the Halacha follows Abbasal's view in both instances because Samuel stated that in matters appertaining to mourning, the Halacha is to follow the view of the more lenient. Authority once in scripture do we derive the term of thirty days of mourning it is obtained by an analogy between two texts which have in common the term peri used in connection with mourning and again used in connection with the Nazi right namely here in the law about mourning it is written let not the hair of your heads grow long to for you and there in the law of the Nazi right it is written he shall let the locks of the hair of his head peri grow long just as the period there. For the Nazi right is thirty days so also here for the mourner it is thirty days and whence do we derive it there said our Matin and unspecified Nazarite vow is binding for thirty days what is the reason the text there reads he shall be Yeh holy the consonant letter value of Yeh being ten plus five plus ten plus five thirty said are who not the son of our Joshua authorities all accept the view that when the third day of mourning occurs on the day before the festival the mourner is forbidden. To wash his whole body till the evening, said Arniamai, the son of our Joshua. I once found our paper and our papa sitting together and stating that the Halachah is in accordance with the statement of Arhuna, the son of Joshua. Some reported thus Arniamai, the son of our Joseph, said, I once found our paper, our papa, and Arhuna, the son of our Joshua, sitting together and stating that all are agreed that when the third day occurs on the day before a festival, the mourner is forbidden to bathe till the evening of a. Inquired of Rabbi, what if one buried his dead during the festival? Does the festival enter into his counting of the thirty days, or does the festival not enter into his counting of the thirty days? I am not asking about counting the festival as part of the seven days because the due observance of seven days of mourning does not obtain during the festival, but what I do ask is about the period of thirty days because the due observance of thirty days does partly obtain during the festival. What? Is your view, you rabbi replied, the days of the festival do not enter into the counting thereupon he put to him an objection from the following if one buried his dead two days before the festival he counts five supplementary days after the festival and his work is done for him by others his men servants and maid servants do their domestic work quietly indoors privily and the public do not need to condole formally with him Talmud, Masmod Kitten as they have already done. That service towards him during the festival as a general principle on this matter it may be stated whatever appertains to the mourner himself that the festival interrupts but whatever appertains to the obligations of the public that the festival does not interrupt if he buried his dead three days towards the conclusion of the festival he counts seven days of mourning after the festival during the first four days alter the festival the public engage in condoling with him but in the Last three days the public do not need to condole with him as they have already done the service towards him during the three days within the festival and the festival enters into the counting now does not this last sentence refer to the latter part of the statement no said rabbi it refers to the former part of the statement thereupon he put an objection to him from the continuation of the very the festival enters into the counting of thirty days how for instance if one buried his dead at the beginning of the festival he counts seven days of mourning after the festival and his work is done by others his men servants and maid servants do work quietly indoors and the public do not need to engage in condoling with him as they have already done that service towards him during the festival and the festival enters in the counting that is a confutation of rabbi when rabin came from palestine he reported are you had to have said even if one buried his dead during the festival and similarly our Eliezer gave as his decision to his son our Pedath, even if one buried his dead during the festival our rabbis taught if one carried out the rule of overturning the couch for three days before the festival he need not overturn it anymore after the festival these are the words of our Eliezer but the sages say he need not even if he had done so only for one day or even for one hour said our Simeon B. Eliezer those were the very words of Beth Shammai and the very words of Beth Hillel for Beth Shammai say for three days before the festival and the Hillelites say even if for one day Arhuna said Arhai B. Abba citing Arhuna and stated Sonic say that Arhuna told Arhai B. Abba and Arhuna he need not even if he had overturned the couch for one day even for one hour Rabbi stated that the Halachah is according to our of the Mishnah who said three days Rabbina once came to Surah Kamifrat he said our Habibah to Rabbina what is the law on this? Point he replied even if he had the couch overturned one day and even for one hour our high B. and our Isaac were once seated in the marquee of our Isaac B. Eliezer when a discussion was begun between them once is it authentically derived that the observance of morning is for seven days from the text and I shall turn your feast into morning and I will make it as the morning for an only son just as the feast lasts seven days so the period of morning is also for seven days but why not draw an analogy with the feast of Ezra which lasts but one day know that analogy is needed for another lesson as explained by Resh Lakish for Resh Lakish said in the name of our Judah once is it derived that on the receipt of belated tidings formal morning obtains for one day only from the text and I shall turn your feast into morning and we find Ezra as an instance where one day celebration is designated a feast our rabbis taught on receiving Near tidings formal morning obtains for seven days as well as up to thirty days on distant tidings it obtains for one day only which are near tidings and which distant tidings near tidings are recent tidings within thirty days and distant tidings are related tidings after thirty days these are the words of our Akiva the sages however say one and the same practice obtains in both on the receipt of near tidings or of distant tidings formal morning obtains for seven as well. As up to thirty days said Rabbi Barhan as citing Aryohan and wherever you find a single authority expressing a lenient view and a number expressing a strict view the Halachah is in accordance with the strict view save in this case that although our Akiva is lenient and the sages are strict the Halachah is in accordance with our Akiva as Samuel stated that in matters obtaining to morning the Halachah follows the lenient authority Arhan and received tidings from BTH Jose about the death. Of his father he consulted Arhista who told him on receipt of distant tidings formal morning obtains for one day only our Nathan BMI received tidings from BTH Jose about his mother he consulted Rabbah who told him the authorities have already stated that on receipt of distant tidings formal morning obtains for one day only thereupon he put to him an objection from the following when does this ruling apply in the case of the other five nearest of kin for whom morning is obligatory but for one's father or mother morning is for seven days and up to thirty days Rabbah replied that is the ruling of an individual with which we do not concur as will be made clear from what is taught in the following there was a case of the father of Arzada who had died at Kinzik and he was not informed till after three
Into the counting and accordingly he observes but one day of formal mourning are at of Caesarea recited in the presence of our Yohanan if one hears near tidings on a Sabbath day and by the termination of the Sabbath it has become distant tidings he observes but one day of formal mourning does one in such a case rent his garment or does he not rent his garment Armani said he does not need to rent his garment Arhanan said he does rent his garment said Armani to Arhanan my view that he does not rent his garment is consistent with the fact that there is no observance of seven but according to your view that he should rent his garment tell me is there a renting of one's garment without the observance of the seven days of mourning but is there not surely isi father of our Zara or Asadik say our Zara's brother resided in the presence of our Yohanan if one had no tunic to rent at the time and he obtained one during the seven days he should rent it then if it became available after the seven days he does not rent it thereupon our Zara chimed in after him when does this ruling apply in the case of the other five nearest of kin for whom mourning is obligatory but in the case of father or mother one always rents one's garment what you cited in fact refers to the deference to be shown to one's father or mother our rabbis taught for all nearest of kin mentioned in the priest's section for whom a priest is to defile himself a mourner is to Observe formal mourning namely these for his wife father or mother brother or single sister son or daughter to these they added his brother or single sister from the same mother as well as his married sister be it from the same mother or the same father and just as he observes formal mourning for these he likewise observes formal mourning for their relatives in the second degree this is our Akiva's ruling our Simeon B. Eliezer says extended formal mourning is not observed except for one son's child and the father's father and the sages say by way of definition whomever he mourns for he should also mourn with is not the sages be practically the same as that of the former ten and not quite there is a practical difference between them whether we require him to be that is to say when he is with him in the same house as Rab said to his son Hai and as Arhuna likewise said to his son Rab in her presence observe mourning away from her presence do not observe Morning when Marakba's father-in-law son died he thought of sitting for him seven days of mourning and continuing to thirty are who not going to his house found him in formal mourning do you desire said he to eat of mourners fairly the sages did not say that one should observe formal mourning out of deference to his wife only in the case of the death of his father-in-law or his mother-in-law as it is taught if his father-in-law or mother-in-law died the husband may not compel his mourning wife to put on coal or do her hair as usual but he should overturn his own couch and observe formal mourning with her and likewise she when her father-in-law or mother-in-law dies may not put on coal or do her hair as usual but she should overturn her couch and observe formal mourning with him and another very the talk although it was stated that he may not compel his wife to put on coal or do her hair as usual it is said they indisputably correct that she may Mix his wine for him, make his bed, and wash his face, hands, and feet. Now the regulations in the two citations contradict each other. Hence, infer from this that the one bury the refers to the death of the father-in-law or mother-in-law, while the other to the death of other near of kin. This proves that it is also taught thus explicitly. They did not lay down that one should observe formal mourning out of deference to his wife, save at the death of his father-in-law or his mother-in-law alone. Amimar lost his son's son, and he rent his garment. Thereupon his son came, and he again rent his garment in his son's presence. He then recollected that he had done it while sitting. He rose and relit his garment again, standing. Said Arashi to Amimar, Once do we arrive at the renting of a garment is to be done standing from the text. And Job rose and rent his mantle. Talmud, Masmod, Kitten, but if that is so, the text, and if he stand and say, I like not to take her, will be. Interpreted similarly, but surely it is taught, and if she loose the shoe from off the foot of a grown up lover, whether he be standing or sitting or stooping, the ceremony is valid. He replied, It is because there it is not written, and he stood and said, Whereas here in our instance it is written, and Job rose and rent his mantle. Rami Bihama said, Whence is it derived that the renting of a garment is to be done standing from what is said, and Job rose and rent his mantle, but perhaps what he did was something extra, for should we not say so? What of the next thing Job did, and he shaved his head, should we likewise have to conform with it? Rather, it is to be derived from here, than the king arose and rent his garments, but here too, perhaps what he did was something extra, for should you not say so? What of the next thing he did, and he lay on the earth, should we likewise have to conform with it? Whereas it is taught, if a mourner sat on a bed, on a chair, or on a stall for urns. And Kens or even goes to the extreme of sleeping on the bare ground he has not discharged his duty to the dead and explained our Yohanan it is because he has not carried out the custom of overturning the bed he replied it means that David lay as it were on the ground our rabbis taught the following things are forbidden to a mourner he is forbidden to do work to bathe or anoint himself to have marital intercourse or don sandals he is forbidden to read the Pentateuch prophets or Hagiography or to recite the Mishnah or Midrash and Halashah or the Talmud or Gedoth if however the public have need of him he need not abstain there was all actual case when a son of our Hosea of Sephoris died he went into the Beth Hamidrash and expounded there all day long also when a daughter of Rabbi died at Beth Shirim he went into the Beth Hamidrash and expounded there all day long Rabbi Barhana had a bereavement and he thought he ought not to go out to give his lecture set. Rab to him we learned and if the public have need of him he does not refrain he then thought of calling upon his exposite assistant when Rab said to him we learned provided only that he does not place at his side an exposite assistant but then how is he to do after the manner taught in the following it happened that when a son of our Judah Bilai died he went into the Beth Hamidrash and our Hananib Akibia also went in and sat him down at his side he then whispered to our Hananib Akibia and our Hananib Akibia whispered to the churchman and the churchman spoke aloud to the public our rabbis taught during the first three days a mourner is forbidden to put on phylacteries from the third day onward the third day included he is allowed to put on phylacteries and he does not have to take them off at the entry of fresh personages visitors this is our Eliezer's opinion our Joshua says a mourner is forbidden to put on phylacteries during the first two days from the second Day onward the second day included he is allowed to put on phylacteries but at the entry of fresh personages visitors he takes them off said Armatina what is the reason for our Eliezer's view because it is written and the days of weeping in the morning of Moses were ended said Ariana what is the reason for our Joshua's view because it is written and I will turn your feast into morning and I will make it as the morning for an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day but as to our Joshua surely it is written and the days of weeping in the morning for Moses were ended he may reply the case of Moses was different the morning for him was more intense and what of our Eliezer too surely it is written and the day thereof I will make as a bitter day the poignancy of the bitternesses but on one day said Ulla the follows our Eliezer in regard to taking off the phylacteries and our Joshua in regard to putting on the phylacteries they inquired what of the second Day of morning according to Allah does he at the entrance of fresh personages have to take them off or does he not have to take them off come and here Allah said he takes them off and puts them on the second day even a hundred times likewise it is taught you to be Tima says he takes them off and puts them on even a hundred times Rabbah said having put them on he does not take them off but was it not Rabbah who said above the Halacha follows our Tana of the Mishnah who says that the minimum observance of formal mourning is three days Talmud, Masmod can be Talmud, Masmod can be it is different in the case of religious precept like phylacteries our rabbis taught a mourner is forbidden during the first three days to do work even a poor man who receives maintenance from charity thereafter he does his work privately in his house and a woman in mourning plies the spindle in her house our rabbis taught a mourner should not go during the first three days to a place of mourning thereafter he may go but not take a place among the comforters but among those who are to be comforted our rabbis taught a mourner is forbidden during the first three days to give greeting of peace after three and to seven days he responds but does not give greeting of peace thereafter he gives greeting of peace and responds in his usual manner it is stated above forbidden during the first three days to give greeting of peace but surely it was taught it happened when two sons of our Akiva bridegrooms died all Israel entered and made a great lament for them and as the people were about to depart our Akiva stood on a large bench and addressed them our brethren the house of Israel here yet even though these two sons were bridegrooms I am consoled on account of the honor you have done them and even though you have come on account of Akiva there is many an Akiva but this it is what you said to yourselves the law of God is in his heart his footsteps
Mourner because he is not abiding in peace but in sorrow but then since it states in the former Beritha after three to seven days he responds does this not imply that others may inquire about the mourner's peace where they are unaware of his bereavement if so does not the same apply also to the other earlier period note then he is obliged to acquaint them of his sorrow and makes no further response whereas here he need not acquaint them of it thereupon some contrasted this. Latter Beritha with the following one who meets another mourner within a twelve month tenders him words of consolation but does not inquire about his peace after a twelve month he inquires about his peace and does not tender him words of consolation but may refer to his sorrow indirectly said Armeir if one meets another mourner after a twelve month and tenders him then words of consolation to what can he be likened to the case of a man who had his leg broken and healed when a physical icon. Met him and said to him, Come to me and let me break it and set it again to convince you that my medicaments are good. This offers no difficulty. This last citation refers to the death of father or mother, while the former refers to the death of other near of kin. But in that case, too, why not tender him words of consolation indirectly? Yes, indeed, he may. And what means after thirty days he may not tender him words of consolation is not in one's usual manner, but he refers to his sorrow indirectly. Our rabbis taught a mourner who arrives home during the first three days from a place in the near vicinity counts his days of mourning with them. If he came home from a distance, he counts on his own. Thereafter, even if he came home from a place in the vicinity, he counts on his own. Our Simeon says, Even if he came home on the seventh day from a place in the vicinity, he counts with them. The master said, During the first three days from a place in the vicinity, he counts with them. Are Hi B Abba is citing Aryohan and said that this is done only where the chief person of the household was at home. The following question was then raised Talmud, Masmod Kitten, what if the chief person of the household had gone to the place of interment? Come and here for our Hi B Abba is citing Aryohan and said that even if the chief person of the household went to the place of interment, he still counts with them. You say he counts with them. Why it is taught definitely he counts by himself. That is not difficult to explain. The former ruling obtains where he returned within three days. The latter ruling obtains where he had not returned within three days. Similar it is to what Rab told the sons of Hazal Pony. Those that come home within three days should count with you. Those that do not come home within three days should count by themselves. Rabbi told the people of Mahose who do not follow the beer should begin counting the days of mourning as soon as. You turn your faces from the city gates. Our Simeon says, even if he came home on the seventh day from a place in the vicinity, he counts with them. Said our high begamita that our Jose B. Saul is reporting. Rabbi said that is done only where on his arrival he found comforters still present. Our Ain and then inquired what if they the comforters had just made ready themselves to get up and leave but had not yet left the stance over for a solution. The fellow collegiate of our Abba B. had it as a tradition from our Abba who was that fellow collegiate Arzera and some say that it was the fellow collegiate of Arzera who had heard it from Arzera and who was that fellow collegiate our Abba son of our high B. Abba who reported our Yohan and to have stated the Halachah is to follow our Simeon B. Gamaliel's view on the point of Jerfut and the Halachah is to follow our Simeon on the point of mourning. The view of our Simeon on the point of mourning is this one which we have just cited and the view of our Simeon B. Gamaliel on is that which is taught if intestines had become perforated and mucilage blocks the perforation at the animal's flesh is kasher what is mucilage said Arkahana it is the viscous matter inside the intestines which comes away under pressure said someone may I be granted to go up to Palestine and learn the legal dictum from the mouth of the master himself when he went up he came upon our Abba son of our high B. Abba said he to him did you sir say that the Halachah is to follow our Simeon B. Gamaliel on the point of Jerfut he replied I said that the Halachah is not so and what about the point of mourning is the Halachah in that case to follow our Simeon he replied opinions are divided on that as it has been stated our Hista said our Simeon's view is the Halachah and our Yohanan said likewise but our Naman said our Simeon's view is not the Halachah the present Halachah however does not follow our Simeon B. Gamaliel's view in Jerfut but as to the point of Mourning the Halachah is like our Simeon's because of Samuel's dictum that in matters of mourning the Halachah is to follow the view of the lenient authority our rabbis taught if for all other dead one expedites the departure of the beer he is praiseworthy but in the case of one's father or mother he is blameworthy if it was the day before the Sabbath or a festival or if pouring rain was falling on it he is praiseworthy as he expedites the interment out of deference to his father or mother for all other dead if he desires he minimizes his business or if he does not desire Talmud, Masmod can be he does not minimize it but for his father or mother he should minimize his business for all other dead if he desires he bears his shoulder and if he does not desire he does not bear it for his father or mother he must bear his shoulder it happened once with a certain great man of the generation whose father had died that he desired to bear his shoulder and Another great man of the generation that was with him desired to bear his two and on that account he the mourner refrained and did not bear his shoulder said Abbe the great man of the generation referred to was Rabbi and the other great man of the generation that was with him was our Jacob Biaha the elder some say that the great man of the generation was our Jacob Biaha and the other great man of the generation that was with him was Rabbi now it seems correct if Rabbi was the great man of the generation that was with him with the mourner we understand why our Jacob Biaha refrained and did not bear his shoulder and heart but according to the other report that Rabbi was the mourner and that our Jacob Biaha was the great man of the generation that was with him why did not he Rabbi bear his shoulder and both hands as Rabbi Simeon be Gamaliel Rabbi's father was the Nasi and everybody should by rights have bared their shoulders this is difficult to explain for all. Dead one has his hair trimmed after thirty days for one's father or mother one lets his hair grow long until his companions rebuke him for all dead one enters a house of rejoicing after thirty days for his father and mother not till after twelve months Rabbi Barhana said and one may go to a joyous entertainment of comrades an objection was raised and one may not go to a joyous feast as well as to an entertainment of rejoicing and to comrades for thirty days this divergence presents difficulty Amimar taught his comments on that same barrier that said Rabbi Barhana but to go to a joyous entertainment of comrades is allowed forthwith but then in another version it is taught one may go to a joyous feast after thirty days and to an entertainment of comrades after thirty days this discrepancy is not difficult to explain the latter version refers to a first invitation to an entertainment of comrades while the former version refers to a return entertainment of comrades for all other dead one makes a rent in his tunic of a handbreadth in depth for one's father or mother he rents his clothes till he bears his heart chest said Arabad what text is there which teaches this then David took hold on his clothes and rent them and there is no taking hold of anything by less than a hand's breadth for all other dead one rents only the uppermost garment even though he be wearing then tent but for one's father or mother one rents them all and the renting of one's undershirt is not indispensable be it in man or woman our Simeon B. Eliezer says a woman rents her undermost garment and turns it front to back and then again rents her uppermost garment for all other dead if one desire he divides the upper salvage order of his garment and if he does not desire he does not divide it for his father or mother he must divide our Judah says any renting of a garment that divides not the salvage order Thereof is mere make-believe said Arabah what is the reason for our Judah statement the text and Elisha saw it and he cried my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces once it says and he rent them do I not know that he rent them in two but the addition of in two implies that at the rent the garments appeared as if torn into two separate pieces for all other dead one. Tax the rent together after seven days and completely reunites the edges after thirty days for one's father or mother one tax it together after thirty days but never reunites the edges a woman tax it together forth without of the respect due to her when Arabin came from Palestine he said citing are you had and for all other dead if one desires he rents his garment with the hand or if he desires he rents by an instrument for one's father or mother one rents with the hand and our high B. Abba said, citing Aryohan, and for all other dead, one rents inside for one's father or mother, one rents outside. Our Hista observed, and the same rule obtains on the death of a Nasi. An objection was raised, those other dignitaries were not deemed equal to one's father or mother, save in regard to reuniting the edges of the rent alone, does not this
Gamaliel that he used to speak on Halashik and Agadic themes in the house of mourning or rabbis taught during the first week the mourner does not go out of the door of his house the second week he goes out but does not sit in his usual place in the synagogue the third week he sits in his usual place but does not speak the fourth week he is like any other person says Arjuna there was no need to say in the first week he does not go out of the door of his house as then everybody comes into his house to comfort him what it should rather say is that the second week he does not go out of the door of his house the third week he goes out but does not sit in his usual place in the synagogue the fourth week he sits in his place but does not speak in the fifth week he is like any other person or rabbis taught for the whole thirty days the mourner is debarred from taking a wife if his wife died he is forbidden to take another until three festivals have gone by Arjuna. Says until the first festival and the second he is forbidden to marry before the third he is allowed if he have no children he may take a wife forthwith lest otherwise he may fail in the duty of procreation if she left him little children he is allowed to take a wife forthwith to take care of them it happened that the wife of Joseph the priest died and he said on the burial ground to her sister go and take care of your sister's children nevertheless he did not go into her as husband. Till a long time after what is meant by a long time our papa said alter thirty days our rabbis taught during the whole thirty days the mourner is debarred from donning pressed clothes it makes no difference whether they be old or new clothes coming out of the press rabbi says they only forbade new clothes our Eliezer son of our Simeon says they only forbade new white linen clothes Abbe went out in a worn sarble in accordance with rabbi Rabba went out in a new Roman retunic in accordance with. Our Eliezer son of our Simeon because the sages said that the Sabbath enters into count but does not interrupt while festivals interrupt and do not enter into count the Judeans and the Galileans differed in regard to this mission the one party saying Talmud, Masmod couldn't be that some morning is to be observed on the Sabbath and the other saying that there is no observance of morning on the Sabbath those that said that some morning is observed on the Sabbath based themselves on the wording in the mission of the Sabbath enters into count the others who said that morning is not observed on the Sabbath based their view on the wording and does not interrupt for said they should you assume that morning is to be observed on the Sabbath why need we have the reservation and does not interrupt but surely it states also the Sabbath enters into count because he has to teach in the latter part that festivals do not enter into count he teaches. Also for the sake of symmetry in the former part the Sabbath enters into count and as to the other side who said that some morning is to be observed on the Sabbath surely it states and does not interrupt because he has to state in the latter part that festivals interrupt the morning he teaches also for the sake of symmetry in the former part the Sabbath does not interrupt might not one suggest that their disagreement goes back to the divergent views of older ten as set out in the following berry for it has been taught one who has his dead laid out before him eats his meals in another house room if he have not another house room he eats in his friend's house if he have not a friend's house available he makes him a partition ten hand bread tie if he have not the wherewithal to make a partition he turns away his face as he takes his meals and he does not recline as he eats nor does he eat his fill he eats not meat nor drinks wine nor does he say the grace nor does he invite others partaking in the meal to join in grace with him nor do others invite him and he is exempt from a recital of Shema from saying the tefillah or donning phylacteries and exempt from the performance of any religious duties that are commanded in the Torah when do these said restrictions obtain on weekdays but on Sabbath he takes meals reclining eats meat and drinks wine recites grace invites others to join him and others invite him and it is incumbent on him to recite the Shema and to say the tefillah and to perform all the religious duties commanded in the Torah Rabban Gamaliel says since he re-enters into these several obligations here mentioned he enters into the obligation of all religious duties and commenting on this are Yohanan said that the actual difference between them is the question of using the marital couch now is not this the issue between them one master takes the view that some morning is to be observed on. Sabbath and the other master that there is to be no morning on Sabbath why do you think so perhaps there the first Tana might not have gone so far as to forbid save only because his dead is still laid out in front of him but here he might not forbid again Rabban Gamaliel there would not have gone so far as to allow save only because there the incidence of morning has not yet occurred whereas here where the incidence of morning has already occurred he might also forbid Talmud, Mas. Modkin and Amar Yohani inquired of Samuel was there some morning to be observed on Sabbath or was there no morning on the Sabbath he replied there is no morning to be observed on the Sabbath some rabbi sitting in the presence of our papa reported in the name of Samuel that a mourner who used the conjugal couch during the seven days of his morning is guilty of a mortal offense said our papa to them what was reported was that it is forbidden not a mortal offense and in the name of our Yohanan it was reported and not in the name of Samuel and if you heard all condemned in the name of Samuel as a mortal offense it was the said our Talafabi Abami is reporting Samuel a mourner who did not let his hair grow long and did not rent his clothes is guilty of a mortal offense for it was said to Aaron and his surviving sons let not the hair of your heads go loose neither rent your clothes that ye die not which clearly implies that any other mourner if he has not let the hair of his head go loose and has not rent his clothes is guilty of a mortal offense Raphram B. Papa said it is taught in the Abel Rabbati a mourner is forbidden to use the conjugal couch during the seven days of mourning and it happened once with one who used his conjugal couch during the seven days of his mourning that swine hauled away his carcass Samuel said pahas are obligatory nadir are optional on the Sabbath i.e. the unveiling of the head turning the rent side of his Garment from front to back and tilting up the couch into its normal position are obligatory on the mourner in honor of the Sabbath donning sandals the use of the conjugal bed and washing his hands and feet with warm water at the approach of the Sabbath even are optional but Rab says the unveiling of his head is also optional now what is the difference and the case of the donning of sandals on the Sabbath that Samuel treats it as optional presumably because not everyone usually wears chooses it not so likewise with the unveiling of the head as not everybody generally goes about with head unveiled Samuel is consistent in this as Samuel said any rending of clothes not done in the flush of grief is not a proper rending and any muffling of the face not alter the manner of the Ishmaelites is not a proper muffling for a mourner Arnaman demonstrated it by covering himself up in his mantle right up to the sides of the beard said our Jacob as reporting Aryo Hanandas. Statement was made above only in reference to one who has no shoes on his feet but if he has shoes on his feet on the Sabbath his shoes give evidence about him any renting of clothes not done in the flush of grief is not a proper renting but yet when they said to Samuel Rab soul has gone to rest he rent on account of him thirteen garments and said God is the man before whom I trembled when they told Aryohan and the soul of Arhanna has gone to rest he rent on account of him. Thirteen robes of Malshian wool and said God is the man before whom I trembled rabbis are in a different category since their discussions are always recalled it is for us like the first flush of grief said Rabin be added to Rabbi your disciple Aram Rome said that it was taught a mourner hearing of a fresh bereavement at any time during the seven days rents his clothes in the forepart thereof and if he has occasion to change the garment he changes and rents afresh on the Sabbath he Rents on hearing the news in the hinder part of the garment and if he has occasion to change it he changes but tears not afresh that was taught only where it was in honor of one's father or mother but not for other near of kin are such rents to be sewed up or are they not to be sewed up on that Namani father of Arashai and Barkipra held different views one saying that the rents are to be sewed up and the other saying that they are not to be sewed up may it be. Inferred that it was the father of Arashai that said that these were not to be sewed up as Arashai said that they were not to be sewed up from whom had he heard this if not from his father not necessarily he Arashai heard it from his master who was Barkipra Rabba said a mourner may walk about in his rent wrap indoors on the Sabbath have they found our Joseph going in and out of his house his head covered with a sedarium on the Sabbath said he to him do you not sir hold the view. That there is to be no observance of mourning on the Sabbath, he replied. Thus said, Are you Hanan? Intimate forms of mourning may be maintained on the Sabbath. Our Eliezer says, Since the sanctuary at Jerusalem was laid in ruins, the feast of Ezra Thias considered as an ordinary Sabbath, etc. said, Argil be Minashia, citing Samuel the Halacha follows the opinion of Rabban Gamaliel, and some attach this comment of Argil be
Arjuna speaking in his Arish male's name says with the poor they make a lament for children of five with the rich for children of six and as for the children of elders they are treated in the same way as the children of the poor said Arjuna Bimina Shia is citing Rav the Halachah is as stated by Arjuna in the name of Arish male Aranani B. Sason gave a discourse at the door of the prince and said one day of mourning before Ezra the feast of weeks with one day of Ezra count. As fourteen days out of the thirty RMI heard of this and was indignant saying is that his own view it is what R. Eliezer Bipet hath said as citing R. Ashai R. Isaac the smith gave a discourse at the Marquis of the Exilarch and said one day of mourning before Ezra with the one day of Ezra count as fourteen days out of the thirty R. Shis heard of this and was indignant saying is that his own view it is what R. Eliezer said as citing R. Ashai for R. Eliezer citing R. Ashai said. Whence is derived the ruling that Ezra the feast of weeks is allowed a supplementary extension to full seven days from what is said three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place he shall choose on the feast of unleavened bread and on the feast of weeks and on the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the Lord thy God empty just as the feast of unleavened bread has a supplementary period to full seven days for the celebration. Offerings the Feast of Weeks has likewise a supplementary extension for festive offerings of full seven days. Our Papa invited the elder Arawiya to act as exposider and he expounded the theme one day of mourning before New Year and New Year's Day together account for fourteen out of the thirty days said Rabban according to this then one day of mourning before the Feast of Tabernacles together with the seven days of the festival and the eighth day of solemn assembly account. Together for twenty-one out of the thirty days of mourning Rabban turned up at Surah on the Euphrates when our Havab of Surah on the Euphrates put the question to him did you sir say that one day before New Year and New Year's Day together account for fourteen out of the thirty days he replied I did say that arguing on the basis of Rabban Gamaliel's view Mishnah none rend their clothes nor bear their shoulder nor provide a repast for the mourner save those who are near akin to. The dead nor do they provide a repast save seated on an upright couch Talmud, Mosmod, Kitten, Gemara, Nunrend, etc. Even though the dead be a recognized scholar but then it is taught otherwise if a scholar dies all are his near of kin all are his near of kin say you rather all are like his near of kin all rend their clothes on his account and all bear their shoulders on his account and all provide a repast for those that mourn on his account in the broad space it is unnecessary. Ruling where the deceased was not a scholar but then if the deceased was a worthy person one is still in duty bound to rend his clothes as it is taught wherefore do a person's sons and daughters die in infancy that one should weep and mourn for a worthy person you say that one should weep and mourn for a worthy person would love you distress on one in advance say rather because one has not wept and mourned for a worthy person for whoever weeps and mourns for a worthy person all his sins. Are forgiven him on account of the honor he rendered to him the deceased it is necessary where the deceased is not a particularly worthy person but yet if one stands here at the time of the person breathing his last one is also in duty bound to rend his clothes as it is taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says one who stands near the dying at the time when he breathes his last he is in duty bound to rend his clothes to what is this like to a scroll of the law that is burnt when one is in duty. Bound to rend his clothes it is a necessary ruling where one was not standing there at the time when the dying breathed his last when the soul of our Sapphire went into repose the rabbis did not rend their clothes on account of him since they said we have not learned from him directly said Abay is it taught when a master died the teaching is when a scholar dies all are his near of kin besides we repeat daily the Halashik interpretations reported in his name at the college the rabbis of the college then took the view that what was done was done said Abay to them we learned if a scholar dies as long as they are engaged in a lament for him they are in duty bound to rend their clothes they thought then of rending forth with their clothes said Abay to them no it is taught a scholar is honored at the lament held on his account when the soul of Arhuna came to repose they thought of placing a scroll of the law on his beer said it his daughter them should one do for him now. Something that he did not countenance in his lifetime for our Talifah said I myself once saw Arhuna when he wanted to sit down on his couch but there was a scroll of the law lying on it so he put an inverted jar on the ground and put on it the scroll of the law obviously he thought that it was forbidden to sit on a couch when there was a scroll of the law lying thereon and the beer could not be got through the doorway and they thought of letting it down from the roof said Arhista I have. Learned this from himself the honor of a scholar requires that his beer should pass through the door they then thought of transferring him from his bed to another but said Arhista to them I have learned thus from himself the honor of a scholar requires that he should be taken out on the first beer for Rav Judah as citing Rav said once is derived the lesson that the honor of a scholar requires that he should be born on his first beer from what is said and they set the ark of God on anew. Cart and brought it out of the house of Abba that was on the hill they then ready the gateway and brought it out our Abba then opened his funerary address our master said he was worthy that the Sheshana should abide with him but the fact of his being in Babylon prevented it thereupon our Naman son of Arhista some say it was Arhanan son of Arhista referred to the text the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzi in the land of the Chaldeans by the River Chibar his father tapped him with his sandal saying to him have I not told you not to worry everybody with this point what is meant by the double expression Heo that it had been had come before he came to Babylon when they brought him up thither to Palestine for burial people told RMI and RC that Arhuna had come they said when we were there in Babylon we had not a chance of raising our heads because of him now that we have come here he has come after us they then were told that it was his coffin that had arrived RC and RC went out to meet him Arla and Arhana did not go out some say Arla went out Arhana did not go out what was the reason of the one who went out according to what is taught in the following if a coffin is passing on its way from place to place they stand in a row on account of the deceased and say the mourner's benediction on account of him and also offer condolence to the mourners what was the reason of the one who did not go out according to what is taught in the following if a coffin is passing on its way from place to place they do not stand in a row on account of it nor say on his account the mourner's benediction nor offer condolence to the mourners these citations contradict one another this is not difficult to explain the former ruling obtains where the body is intact the latter where the body is not intact and Arhuna's body was intact why did one not go out to meet it because he had not been fully informed of this then they said where shall we lay him to rest said some let us lay him at the side of our high for our who not disseminated Torah in Israel and our high had likewise disseminated Torah in Israel who will bring him into the cave of our high said our high I shall bring him in because I sustained revised my studies before him when I was but 18 years of age never having experienced the effects of an unchanged ass dream and he made me his attendant and therefore I know of his pious deeds for one day the strap of his phylacteries was accidentally reversed whereupon he sat fasting 40 days he then brought him into the cave Judah was laid there at the right of his father our high and on his left was his twin brother Hezekiah said Judah to Hezekiah rise from your place for it is not good matters that our not be left standing as he Hezekiah rose a column of fire rose with him our Haggah seeing that was overcome with fear set up the coffins and came Away and the reason that he came to no harm from the pillar of fire was because he set up the coffin of Arhuna when the soul of Arhista went to its rest they the collegiate thought of placing a scroll of the law on his beer said our Isaac to them what he had disapproved of being done for his master shall we now do to himself they then thought that they should not stitch the rent in their garments when our Isaac BMI said to them it is taught in the case of a scholar who died as soon as they have turned away their faces at the rear of the beer they may stitch together the rent when the soul of Rabbison of Arhuna went to its rest and that of Arhamna they took them both up thither Talmud, Mosmod could be as they came to a bridge the camels halt it said a certain Arab to those who accompanied the cortege what is that they replied that the deceased rabbis were doing honor to one another one saying as it were you sir proceed first and the other saying you sir Proceed first, said he the Arab in my judgment, it is right that a notable the son of a notable Rabbi son of Arhuna should take precedence the camel bearing Rabbi son of Arhuna then passed along first the molars and teeth of that Arab fell out then a certain child opened his funerary oration thus a scion of ancient stock from Babylon came with records of prowess in combat and fame twice numerous
Whitely was not as at Marisave our life our was a son-in-law in the Nasai's family he had no children but he prayed for mercy and had his wish granted on the day when the child was born unto him he himself went to his repose and the funeral order on that occasion opened his lament thus joyous turned to sorrow and gladness linked with sadness when the time of joy came nigh the father heaped a dying sigh at the birth of his gracious little son the gracious sire's life was done. They gave the child the name of Hanan after his father when the soul of our Petath went into repose our Isaac B. Eliezer opened his address thus this day is as hard for Israel as the day when the sun set at noontide as it is written and it shall come to pass in that day that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day and I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation as the morning of an only so and said our Yohanan then was. The day of King Josiah's death when the soul of our Yohanan went into repose our army observed on his account the seven days of mourning and the thirty said our Abba son of our high B. Abba what our am I did he did but on his own initiative for the said our high B. Abba is citing our Yohanan even for his master who had taught him wisdom one sits but one day when the soul of our zero went into repose the order of that occasion opened his address thus the land of Shinir was his home of birth the land of Glory reared her darling to fame woe is me Sethricath in lament for she hath lost her choicest ornament when the soul of Arabah went into repose the columns at Caesarea ran with tears at the death of our Jose the roof cutters at Sephoris ran with blood at that of our Jacob Biaha stars were visible in daytime at that of our sea all cedars were uprooted at the death of our Samuel B. Isaac all trees were uprooted at that of our high B. Abba fiery stones came down from the sky at that of our Menahem Bismai all images were effaced and came to be used as stone rollers at that of Tanham son of our high of Farako all human statues were torn out of their position at that of our Isaac son of our Elisha seventy houses were broken into by thieves at Tiberias at that of our Hanunah hail stones came down from the sky at that of Rabbah and our Joseph the rocks of the Euphrates kissed each other at that of Abay and Rabbah the rocks of the Tigris kissed each other when the soul of our Meshachia went into repose the palms were laden with thorns our rabbis taught Talmud, Masmod Kitanay and these are rents that are not to be sewed up one who rents his clothes for his father or mother or his master who taught him wisdom for a Nasai or a Bethdin or on hearing evil tidings or hearing God's name blasphemed or when a scroll of the law has been burnt or at the side of the ruined cities of Judea the holy temple or Jerusalem and one rents first for the temple and then enlarges the rent for Jerusalem for his father or mother or for his master who taught him wisdom once derived with these rulings from what is written and Elisha saw it and he cried my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof my father my father that is to rent on the loss of one's father or mother the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof that is for a master who taught one Torah how exactly does it convey this meaning as our Joseph rendered it in Aramaic. My master, my master, who was better protection to Israel with his prayer than chariots and horsemen, and whence that these rents are not to be reunited from what is written in the same passage, and he Elisha took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Once it says, and he rent and do and not know that he rent them in two asunder, it must be meant to teach that the severed parts ever remain rent apart in two said Rushlahish to our Yohan and Elijah, however, is alive, he replied. Since it is written there, and he saw him no more, he was as dead to him to Elisha for Nasai or Bethdin, or on hearing evil tidings, whence do we derive these rulings from what is written? Then David took hold of his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him, and they wailed and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. Now Saul that is the Nasai prince. Jonathan, that is the Bethdin, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel that refers to evil tidings that reached them, said Rabbi Shabbatu Arkahana, might not one explain that they did not rend their clothes until after hearing all those misfortunes that had then happened? He replied, The repetition of for this and for that and for separate the items from one another, yet do we have to rend clothes on hearing evil tidings for when they informed Samuel that King Shippur had slain 12,000 Jews at Caesarea Mazaka, he did not then rend his clothes, the sages did not say it should be done, save where the misfortune involves the larger part of the community resembling the typical instance, and is it a fact that King Shippur slew Jews? For it is reported that King Shippur said to Samuel, May you befall me if I have ever slain a Jew, for there it was the Jews that had brought it on themselves, as are I said that the noise of the harp. Strings about Caesarea Mazaka burst the wall of Laodicea rents on hearing God's name blasphemed once do we derive this from what is written and came Eliakim the son of Hilkiah who was over the household engine the scribe and Joe the son of Azap the recorder to Hezekiah with their clothes rent and told him the blasphemous words of Rab Shekai our rabbis taught it makes no difference whether one hears it himself or hears it from another who had heard it he is in duty bound to rent his clothes but the witnesses are not in duty bound to rent again on reporting as they have already rent at the time they heard the blasphemy you say as they have already rent at the time they heard the blasphemy what matters it since they do hear it now again in reporting do not imagine such a thing for it is written and it came to pass when the king heard it that he rent his clothes the king we are told rent his clothes but they who reported it did not rent again and Whence do we know that these rents are not to be mended? That is learned from a comparison between the renting here by King Hezekiah and renting elsewhere. Rents when a scroll of the law has been burnt. What is the source for this? What is written? And it came to pass when Jehudi had read three or four columns that he cut it with a penknife and cast it into the fire that was in the brazier. What is the point of saying had read three or four columns? They told King Jehoiakim that Jeremiah had written a book of lamentations, and he said to them, What is written there? They quoted, How doth the city sit solitary? The king replied, I am the king. They then cited to him the second verse. She weepeth sore in the night. He replied again, I am the king. They then cited the third verse. Judah is gone into exile because of affliction. Again, he replied, I am the king. They continued with verse four. The ways of Zion do mourn. I am the king. He replied, They continued with the Fifth verse her adversaries are become the head he asked who said that they continued with that same verse for the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions forthwith he began to cut out all the names of God mentioned therein and burnt them in the fire hence it is written in the report there yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words which implies that the bystanders should have rent their clothes said Abbe to our papa might it not be suggested that the reason why they should have rent was for hearing evil tidings he replied hardly for were there at that time any evil tidings as yet said our helbo as citing our one who witnesses a scroll of the law being torn is in duty bound to make two rents one on account of the injury to the parchment and one for the injury to the writing as may be gathered from what is said then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after that. The king had burned the roll and the words which Barak wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah the roll that is the parchment and, and the words that is the writing Arabah and Arunah Bihai were once sitting together Arabah got up to go and relieve himself he took off his head phylactery and put it down on a pillow when a young ostrich came and wanted to swallow it said he Arabah if that had been swallowed I should now have had to make two rents said the other ones do you derive this a similar thing happened to me and I came to Armadan asking for guidance and he had none to give me I then came to Rab Judah and he told me thus said Samuel the rabbis taught that one should rent only where a sacred text is torn or burnt by force majeure and as in the example cited or at the side of the ruined cities of Judea the holy temple or Jerusalem once do we learn this from what is written and it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gedaliah and no man knew it that there Come certain men from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with meal offerings and frankincense in their hand to bring them in the house of the Lord, said our Helbo, as citing Olaf Gerei, who reported our Eliezer, one who sees the cities of Judah in their state of ruin, recites the verse, Thy holy cities are become a wilderness, and rents his garment on seeing Jerusalem in its state of ruin, one recites. Our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee is burned with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste, and rents his garment. He first makes a rent for the holy temple, and then enlarges the rent
of three fingers and the extension may be as small as he here said the halacha follows are in regard to the initial rending and in regard to the extension the halacha follows are Judah it is likewise taught our Jose says the initial rending is to the extent of one hand breadth and the extension may be as little as one cares our rabbis taught if one was informed that his father died and he rent his garment then that his son died and he added thereto the lower inner portion may be reunited the upper parts is not to be reunited that his son died and he rent his garment then that his father died and he added thereto the upper part may be reunited and the lower part is not to be reunited if one was informed that his father died that his mother died that his brother died that his sister died he makes one rent for all our Judah be but there says for all near of kin he makes one rent for his father and slash or mother he makes another rent because a rent made for ones. Father or mother is not to be added to what is the reason for this differentiation said Arnaman B. Isaac it is because there is no extension of a rent in their case Samuel said the Halacha follows the view of our Judah B. But, but did Samuel say that inasmuch Samuel stated that the Halacha in matters of mourning is to follow the view of the more lenient authority the observance of mourning comes under one category and the act of renting under another category to what extent does one rent his garment to exposing his breast down to the region of the navel some say only down to the region of the heart although there is no authentic proof on this point there is some scriptural allusion to it as it is said and rend your hearts and not your garments having reached to the navel on hearing another evil report he moves away a space of three fingers from the former rent and rends afresh if the fore part of his garment is become full of rents he turns it Garment front to back and then rents again if it become full of rents in the upper parts he turns the garment upside down but one who rents the lower part or on the sides of the garment has not discharged his duty save the high priest who rents his garment below on the extension renting our and Marak Bah held different views and both advanced them in the names of Abba Samuel's father and our Levi Bisa C1 said any time during the seven days one rents anew for another bereavement and after the seven he merely adds to the first rent the other said any time during the thirty one rents anew for another bereavement and after the thirty he merely adds thereto to these statements Arzara Demur now said Arzara in regard to the one who says any time during the seven days one rents anew for another bereavement why rent anew because the rent may not be tacked together then in the case of a woman in view of the master's statement a woman mourner Tax the rent together forthwith may she not just as well add even to the first rent no because there it is a concession merely out of the respect due to a woman again said Arzara in regard to the one who says any time during the thirty one rents anew for another why is that because the rent is not to be reunited then in the case of a rent made for a father or mother that is never to be reunited may he not just as well add to the rent no because there also the restriction is merely out of the deference due to one's father and mother our rabbis taught one who goes forth before the dead with a garment already rent robs the dead and the living relatives of their due rabbin Simeon B. Gamaliel says if a man says to his friend lend me your cloak and I shall go and visit my father who is ill and he went and found him already dead he rents it and then mends the rent after returning home he returns the cloak and compensates him for the damage done by the Rent, but if he had not informed him of his intention to visit his sick father, he must not touch it. Our rabbis taught if one who is ill sustains bereavement, they should not inform him thereof, lest either by become distracted in mind, nor do they direct to have any garments rent in his presence, and they direct the women to keep silent from lamenting in his presence. Children may be made to rent their clothes in order to stir up sadness, and garments are also rent for a father in law or mother. In law, out of deference to one's wife, our papa said it is taught in the able rabbi, a mourner should not set an infant on his knee because the child may amuse him, and he may thereby incur censure from his fellow men, nor do they provide a repast save seated on upright couches. Our rabbis taught one who goes to the house of a mourner, if he be on familiar terms with him, may provide the repast for him to be taken on overturned couches, but if not, he provides the repast for him to be taken on. Couches in erect position Rabbah suffered a misfortune and Abba Martha who is the same as Abba Bimanyam I went to the house to provide the mourners repast for him Rabbah sat on all upright couch while Abba Martha sat on an overturned one said Rabbah how lacking in good senses that associate of the rabbis our rabbis taught one who goes from place to place and mourning befell him while being on the road Talmud, Masmo Kitten if he can reduce his business affairs he should do so and if not let him carry on with them as best he may our rabbis taught when do mourners overturn the beds from the moment the corpse is taken from the house these are the words of our Eliezer our Joshua says from the moment that the rolling slab closes the tomb it happened when Rabbi Gamaliel the elder died as soon as he was taken out of the door of his house our Eliezer said to them overturn your beds and after the rolling slab had been placed to close the tomb our Joshua said to them overturn your Bed said they to him we have already overturned them by order of the elder our Eliezer our rabbis taught when do they place the beds in erect position on the approaching eve of the Sabbath from the time of the evening offering onward said rabbi son of Hunan nevertheless he the mourner does not sit down on it until it gets dark and on the termination of the Sabbath although he may have but one day more to sit in mourning he overturns it again our rabbis taught one who has to overturn his bed overturns not his own bed alone but all the beds he has in the house even though he has ten beds in ten places he overturns them all and even if there be five brothers one of whom died they all overturn their beds if however it be a bed specially set apart for vestments that one need not be overturned a darjish couch need not be overturned but should be tilted up rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says in the case of a darjish it is enough if he loosens the bolster frame and lets it drop down of its own accord, what is a darjish said, well, it is a couch of fortune, said Rabbi to him, but then how does that meaning fit the ruling in reference to a king? For we learned, and when they provide for him the mourners were passed, all the people recline at the repast on the ground while the king sits on the darjish. Is there any reason why he should now be seated on a special couch which he had hitherto not been able to sit on to this question? Our Ashi demurred, saying, What is this? Difficulty, it may be just as exceptional as eating and drinking with the king, because heretofore they the people did not provide for him food and drink, whereas now in his mourning they do provide for him food and drink, but if difficulty there be in the offered explanation it arises from what is taught, there is no need to overturn a darjish, but he merely tilts it up now. If darjish be a couch of fortune, why is there no need to overturn it? Surely it is taught one who has to overturn. His bed overturns not his own bed alone but all the beds he has in his house and what is this difficulty why a darjish is similar to a bed specially set apart for vestments as it is taught there if it be a bed specially set apart for vestments that need not be overturned but if difficulty there be in the explanation it is this from what is taught there Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel says in the case of a darjish it is enough if he unfastens the inner bolster frame and lets it drop down. Now if you suppose that darjish means a couch of fortune what bolster frame is there at all when Rabin came home from Palestine he said one of the rabbis whose name is Artalafa the Palestinian who used to frequent the leather mart told me what is a darjish it is said he a couch covered with a hide it has also been stated our Jeremiah said in a darjish the interlacing of the girths is on the inside in a bed couch the interlacing of the girths is on the outside said our Jacob Bihaiz. Reporting our Joshua B. Levi the Halacha follows the opinion of our Simeon B. Gamaliel also this our Jacob B. Allah is to have said as reporting R.C. that where a couch has projecting lean backs it is enough if he merely tilts it up our rabbis taught if he slept during the seven days on a chair or on a large bench for water jugs or even on the ground he has not discharged his duty said our Yohanan he has not discharged his duty because he has not conformed to the practice of overturning the bed. Our rabbis taught we may sweep or stir the floors in a house of mourning and wash dishes cups jugs and wine goblets in a house of mourning but do not bring perfumes or spices into a house of mourning but this is not correct for Barkeper taught one should not say a benediction for enjoying the scent of perfumery or spices in a house of mourning which implies that while we do not say a benediction they may yet be taken into the house that presents no difficulty the former ruling is for. The house of mourning, while the latter ruling is for the house of comforters, mission of provisions should not be conveyed to the house of mourning on an ornamental tray salver or fruit basket, but in plain baskets. And the mourners' benediction in grace after meals I has not said during the festival week, but comforters may stand in a row and comfort them. And the mourners give leave of
Deference to the living that suffer from intestinal disorders formerly they were wont to subject to ritual ablution all utensils that had been used by dying menstruants and the living menstruant women felt thereby shame they instituted therefore that they should subject utensils used by all dying women alike out of deference to the living menstruants formerly they were wont to subject to ritual ablution all utensils used by those suffering from a flux while dying and the living. Suffering from a flux felt shame they therefore instituted that they should subject to ablution utensils used by all out of deference to the living suffering from flux formerly the expense of taking the dead out to his burial fell harder on his near of kin than his death so that the dead man's near of kin abandoned him and fled until at last Rabban Gamaliel came forward and disregarding his own dignity came out to his burial in flax investments and thereafter the people followed his. Lead to come out to burial in flax investments said our papa and nowadays all the world follow the practice of coming out even in a paltry shroud that costs but a zoos they set not down the beer in the broadway said our papa in the case of a scholar who died no regard is paid to the festival week and much less so during Hanukkah or Purim and this ruling obtains only in his presence but away from his presence no lament is allowed but that is not correct for our Kahana did make a lament. For our Zebit of Nihardi at Pumnahara said our papi it was on the day of receiving the tidings of his death and that is deemed the same as in his presence said Ula the technical meaning of a hest is lamenting with striking upon the breast as it is written tremble yes strip you and gird sackcloth upon your loins striking upon the breast the technical meaning of tipu is clapping one's hands in grief and that of Achilles is tapping with the foot in mourning our rabbis taught. One who does the tapping with the foot should not do so when wearing either sandal or boot because of the danger said our Yohanan as soon as the mourner nods his head the comforters are no longer allowed to remain seated by him our Yohanan said also all are in duty bound to rise at the presence of the Nasi save a mourner or one who feels ill and furthermore said our Yohanan to all we may say be seated save to a mourner or one who feels ill said Rab Judah as citing Rab a mourner is forbidden to eat of his own bread on the first day of mourning as the El Merciful said to Ezekiel and eat thou not the bread of men Rabbah and our Joseph alternately provided the repast to each other this also said Rab Judah as reporting Rab when a person dies in town all the townspeople are forbidden from doing work our Hamana once came to Deramatha he heard the sound of the funerary bugle and seeing some people carrying on their work he said let the people be under the Shamath of band is there not a person Dead in town they told him that there was an association in the town if so said he to them it is allowed you to work and furthermore Rab Judah said as citing Rab whoever indulges in grief to excess over his dead will weep for another there was a certain woman that lived in the neighborhood of Arhuna she had seven sons one of whom died and she wept for him rather excessively Arhuna sent word to her act not thus she heeded him not and he sent to her if you need my word it is well but if not are you anxious to make provision for yet another he the next son died and they all died in the end he said to her are you fumbling with provision for yourself and she died our rabbis taught weep yet not for the dead neither bemoan him that is weep not for the dead that is in excess neither bemoan him beyond measure how is that applied three days for weeping and seven for lamenting and thirty to refrain from cutting the hair and donning pressed clothes here after the holy one Bless be he says ye are not more compassionate towards him that departed than I would serve for him that goeth away said Rab Judah as reporting Rab that means weep for him who goes to his long home childless or Joshua be Levi would not go to visit a house of mourning save to that of one who had gone childless for it is written said he weep serve for him that goeth away for he shall return no more nor see his native country Arhuna said this verse refers to one who committed a sinful act and repeated it again Arhuna is here adhering to his own view as he said as soon as a person has continued a sinful act and has repeated it, it has become unto him permissible you say become unto him permissible can you conceive such a thing say rather that it has become unto him as though it were something permissible said our Levi a mourner during the first three days should look upon himself as if a sword is resting between his shoulders from the third to the seventh as if it stands in the Corner facing him thereafter as if it is moving alongside him in the broad marketplace and the beer of women is never set down in the Broadway for the sake of propriety said the Nihardians this mission was taught only Talmud, Masmod Katane with reference to a woman who died in childbirth but that of other women may be set down in the Broadway our Eliezer says the rule applies even to other women as it is written and there Miriam died and was buried there which shows that her death was close to her place of burial our Eliezer also said that Miriam also died by the divine kiss like Moses we interpret the expression there used at Miriam's death in the same sense as that of the expression there used of Moses wherefore then is it not said about her that she died by the mouth of the Lord because it would be unbecoming to say so said RMI wherefore is the account of Miriam's death placed next to the laws of the red heifer to inform you that even as the red Heifer afforded atonement by the ritual use of its ashes so does the death of Tyrishus afford atonement for the living they have left behind our Eliezer said wherefore is the account of Aaron's death closely followed by the account of the disposal of the priestly vestments to inform you that just as the priest's vestments were means to effect atonement so is the death of the righteous conducive to procuring atonement our rabbis taught if one dies suddenly this is reckoned as being snatched away if one is ill one day and dies that is reckoned as being hustled away our Hanani of Gamaliel says that is death by a stroke for it is said son of man behold I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a pestilential stroke and it is written thereafter so I spoke unto the people in the morning and that even my wife died after two days illness it is a rather precipitous death after three it is one of reproof after four it is one of rebuff snubbing after five is the ordinary death of all men said Arhonin what is the text for this behold thy days are approached that thou must die behold accounts for one thy days accounts for two more are approached gives us two more which makes five behold makes one because the word for one in Greek is hand if one dies under fifty years old that is death by Gareth at fifty two years that is the death of Samuel of Rama at sixty that is by the hand of heaven said Marzitra what is the text for this thou shalt come to thy grave in right age as the numerical value of the word for in right age yield sixty at seventy it is the death of the hoary head at eighty it is the death of a vigorous old man for it is written the days of our years are threescore and ten or even by reason of strength four score years said Rabbah from fifty to sixty years of age that is death by Gareth and the reason why this has not been mentioned was out of deference to the prophet Samuel of Rama or Joseph on. His attaining the age of sixty made a festival day for the rabbis of the academy saying I have just passed beyond the limit of Kareth said Abbe to him granted sir that you have passed the limit of Kareth as to years but as to the limit of sickening days have you escaped that he replied nevertheless hold on to the half our soul went into repose suddenly and the rabbis of the academy were perturbed thereat when Zoka who hailed from Adiobani taught them what we learned applies. Only when one has not attained the age of strength eighty but if one has attained the age of strength eighty a sudden death is dying by the kiss Rabbah said length of life children and sustenance depend not on merit but rather on mazel for take Rabbah and Arhista both were saintly rabbis one master prayed for rain and it came the other master prayed for rain and it came Arhista lived to the age of ninety two Rabbah only lived to the age of forty in Arhista's house they were held. Sixty marriage feasts at Rabbah's house there were sixty bereavements at Arhista's house there was a pure sweetened bread for dogs and it went to waste at Rabbah's house there was barley bread for human beings and that not to be had this two Rabbah said these three requests I made of heaven two were granted me and one was not I prayed for the scholarship of Arhuna and the wealth of Arhista which were granted me but the modest disposition of Rabbah's son of Arhuna that was not granted me are S.E. Oram Rabbah's brother while sitting at Rabbah's bedside saw him Rabbah going into sleep dying when he the invalid said to his brother do tell him sir not to torment me or S.E. Oram replied are you sir not his intimate friend said Rabbah since my mazel has been delivered to him he takes no heed of me or S.E. Oram then said to the dying do sir show yourself to me in a dream he did show himself and when asked did you sir suffer pain he replied as from the prick of the cupping instrument Rabbah. While seated at the bedside of Arnam and saw him sinking into slumber, death said he to Rabbah, Tell him, Sir, not to torment me, said Rabbah, Are you, Sir, not a man esteemed? Said Arnam, and to him who is esteemed, who is regarded, who is
On the cedar tree of the schoolhouse the tree cracked Arhista stopped and he overcame him as for Arhai he could not gain access to him so one day he adopted the guise of a poor man and came and rapped at the gate saying bring me out some bread the others brought out some bread to him said he then to Arhai don't you sir treat the poor kindly why not sir also treat kindly this man standing outside here Arhai opened the door to him whereupon showing him a fiery rod he made him yield. His soul Talmud, Masmod could and Bimish, women may raise a whale during a festival week but not clap their hands in grief. Arishmael says those that are close to the beer clap their hands in grief on the days of new moon of Hanukkah and of Purim they may raise a whale and clap their hands in grief neither on the former nor on the latter occasions do they chant a dirge after the dead has been interred they neither raise a whale nor clap their hands in grief what is meant by raising a whale in we went all sing in unison what is meant by a dirge Kino when one speaks and all respond after her as it is said and teach your daughters wailing and one another each lamentation Kino but as to the future days to come the prophet says he will destroy death forever and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces Gamara what say the women in lament said Rab cry woe over him that is now departing cry woe over his wounds and smarting Rabba said the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus cry woe over him that is departing cry woe over his wounds and smarting Rabbah also said the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus withdraw the bone from out the pot and the kettles fill with water hot Rabbah said this also the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus be muffled ye high mountains clouds covering your head of high lineage and grand ancestry came he that is dead also this said Rabbah the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus borrow and buy a mashian robe to dress a freeborn son give it free of charge for provision left he none and furthermore said Rabbah the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus comes hurrying and scurrying tumbling aboard the ferry and having to borrow his fare again this said Rabbah the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus our brothers are merchants who at the custom houses are searched and again said Rabbah the women of Shook and Zeeb speak thus this death or that death is the end of the quest our bruises are the rate of interest it is taught our mayor was wont to say. It is written it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to heart and the living will lay it to heart what is the things about death if one makes lament others will lament for him if one assists at burial others will bury him if one bears the beer others will bear him if one raises his voice others will raise their voice for him others read the last and he that raises not himself with pride others will raise him as it is written glorify not thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men for better is it that it be said unto thee come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince our rabbis taught when the sons of our Ishmael died four elders went into his house to comfort him our tarfan our Jose the Galilean our Eliezer Beazeria and our Akiva said our tarfan to them no yeah he is a great sage and erudite in homiletic Exposition let none of you break in while another is speaking said our Akiva and I be last our Ishmael opened the conversation and said his sins were many his sorrowful bereavements came in close succession he troubled his masters once and a second time our Tarfan responded and said but your brethren the whole house of Israel bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled is not this universal sorrow more do now even than their wife Nadab and Abihu who had performed but one office as it is written and the sons of Aaron presented the blood unto him were thus universally mourned how much more clue to the sons of our Ishmael our Jose the Galilean then responded and said it is written and all Israel shall make lamentation for him and bury him is not more do now wife of Jeroboam's son who had done but one good thing as it is written because in him there is found some good thing towards the Lord God of Israel was mourned in such universal manner how much more is clue to the Sons of Ishmael, what was that good thing? Arzira and Arhanabi Papa gave different explanations, one saying that he left his charge post and went on a festive pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the other saying that he removed the military guards that his father had posted on the roads to prevent the Israelites from going on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Our Eliezer Beazeria then responded and said, Thou shalt die in peace and with the burning of thy fathers, the former kings that were before thee. So shall they make a burning for thee is not more clue now why if Zechlikia king of Judah who had performed but one office in having had Jeremiah lifted from the mire was to be mourned thus how much more is due to the sons of Ishmael our Akiva then responded and said in that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadadrimon in the valley of Mahidon on this our Joseph said had we not the Aramaic Targum rendering of that text I would not have known what it said there. In that time the morning at Jerusalem will be as great as the lament over Ahab son of Omri whom Hadadrimon son of Tabrimon had slain and as the lament over Josiah son of Ammon whom Pharaoh the lame Neko had slain in the valley of Mahidon is not more do now why of Ahab king of Israel who had done but one good thing as tea is written and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Arameans and died and even was lamented thus how much more is due to the sons of Ishmael said Rabbi Rabbi Bimari it is written about Zedekiah thou shalt die in peace yet it is written thereafter moreover he Nebuchadnezzar put out Zedekiah's eyes he replied that our Yohanan had explained it thus namely that Nebuchadnezzar died in Zedekiah's lifetime again said Rabbi to Rabbi Bimari it is written therefore behold I will gather thee to thy fathers and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace yet it is written about him elsewhere and the archers shot at king Josiah and the king said to his servants have me away for I am sore wounded and on this last part our Judah citing Rab commented they riddled his body like a sea this too he replied our Yohanan explained that the temple had not been destroyed as threatened in his lifetime said our Yohanan comforters are not permitted to say a word until the mourner opens conversation as it is said so they sat down with him on the ground and none spake a word unto him for they saw that his grief was very great after this open job. His mouth then answered Eliphaz the Temanite said Arabah whence derived we the practice that the mourner reclines in the foremost place at the mourners repast from what is said by Jabba chose out their way and sat chief and dwelt as a king at the army as one comforteth the mourners as one comforteth the mourners does not that convey rather that he was at the head in comforting others said Arnam and B. Isaac not necessarily as it is written Yenahem it may be rendered as when one. Comforteth mourners Marzitra said the rule might be derived from here and Prince B. He who is embittered distraught among those stretched on couches said Arhamabi had whence is derived the practice that a bridegroom reclines in the foremost place at the marriage feast from what is said I will rejoice in the Lord for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation as a bridegroom that ministers in his diadem as a priest which means that just as a priest with whom he is compared is at the head so is the bridegroom placed at the head and whence have we this ruling about the priest himself from what is taught in Abaritha of the school of Arishmael and thou shalt sanctify him the priest for he offered the bread of thy God which means sanctify him in every matter appertaining to hallowed things to be first to begin first to say grace first to take a fair portion Arhanabi said the dying gasp severely agitate the body Talmud, Masmod, and the like. The rigging at the edge of the mast, our Yohanan said, like the top sail at the edge of the mast, our Levi Bihita said, one bidding farewell to the dead should not say unto him, go unto peace, but go in peace, one bidding farewell to the living friend should not say to him, go in peace, but go unto peace, one bidding farewell to the dead should not say to him, go unto peace, because it is said unto Abraham, but thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried, one bidding farewell to the living friend should not say to him, go in peace, but go unto peace, because there was David who said to Absalom, go in peace, and he went and was hanged, whereas Jethro said to Moses, go unto peace, and he went and succeeded and said, our Levi, whoever comes out of the synagogue and goes into the Beth Hamid Rash, or from the Beth Hamid Rash to the synagogue shall gain the privilege of being admitted into the presence of the Shechina, as it is said, they go from strength to strength, every one of them appeareth. Before God in Zion are high be ashi as citing rap said the disciples of the sages have no rest even in the world to come as it is said they go from strength to strength every one of them appeareth before God in Zion.